Okay, guys, welcome. If you're watching this live, you, this is coming straight from Puerto Rico. We're in the gazebo office right outside my house. You can see the kind of pool in the background and uh, excited to be doing this live stream. You might be watching this after the live stream and, and watching the recording. So participate with us, whether it's live or afterwards. We'd love to get your feedback. We want to kind of make you involved in this process. And we are going to be doing wholesaling for about four hours right now with teenagers. And we've got Jonathan, my son, right here behind me. So Say hi, right. Johnny. we got Truman. He's hi. Jonathan's friend and, and actually our next door neighbor here in Puerto Rico. And we've also got Brian, Brian Russo. He's live streaming with us. There's Brian from Massachusetts, right, Brian? Yeah, from Mass. Great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And so Jonathan's bird dogged a couple of deals for me. So he's he's kind of familiar with the finding process. Hasn't done his first deal all the way through from like contract, find the buyer, you know, to closing. So he's kind of working on that first like legit wholesale deal. Truman's also working on his first deal. Really close on one. In fact, we're hopefully in the next couple hours, we'll talk to a cash buyer, right, Truman? We might talk to the agent. We're like, we're like 99% sure we've got a deal. So this is going to be his first deal. Pretty exciting. We think we've got maybe a 10000 or so wholesale fee on that deal. It is on market. It's a bank property. And so we're going to be kind of be looking at that deal as well, Truman. So hopefully we get some progress while we're live streaming today. We're supposed to hear back like any any minute now from the agent if the bank accepted that offer. It's a house in Michigan. Uh, what's crazy about that deal is, and maybe we'll start with that one. Hmm. I, I think that's crazy. Is it's listed for two hundred and fifteen thousand. Brian, you'll get a kick out of this. Listed for two hundred fifteen, two fifteen or two seventeen. Two seventeen. Listed for two hundred seventeen thousand. Truman made an offer for one sixty. Uh, they said okay to that offer, right? So right away, like massive discount. And then I took a look at. It. I said, Truman, this thing's way off. I don't know where they even got that list price. You know, that list price is probably like ARV or pretty close to it. So I said, I think the ARV is this. I think the repairs are this. So then Truman went back to the agent and said, you know, we we really need to be more like around 80, 82. Agent said, well, I think the bank might take that. And so when Truman told me that, I was like, what in the heck is going on here? They're going to take 80,000 on a 217 list. Just the weirdest thing. So then Truman and I jumped on the phone and we talked to the agent and we actually made our official offer at 75 and uh, and we did a highest and best and we're competing with one other offer that's, there's two offers. There's one that's a little lower and then there's a, another conventional offer that's like way higher. And, uh, and so we're the, but, but we're the highest cash offer and we're supposed to have an answer today. So we've already reached out to several cash buyers that I know. We're gonna try to get on the phone and maybe talk to a few, like I said, you know, here in a minute, uh, we've got one commitment at 80 and I think they'll come up some, but I think we can get a lot more for it because what do we figure out Truman? ARV is like 250. Yeah, 250. I think it's like a 250 ARV, maybe a 75 K rehab somewhere around there. So, you know, getting the contract at 75 gives some room there for, for a flipper to do their thing. So we'll, we'll kind of pull that one up as well. Uh, a couple things here that I want to kind of maybe lay the groundwork for what we're hoping to accomplish. We're actually going to get online right now and we're going to we're going to look at and source and find deals, run some numbers on those and then get on the phone, call and make offers. So, uh, Brian, hopefully you've got some that we can maybe look at in your market that you're kind of working on right now. Yeah. Truman and Johnny both have spent a little bit of time, you know, yesterday and the day before getting some properties ready. We're going to probably focus mostly just on on market only because we know we can get on the phones and talk to people with off market. It would be kind of cold calling and we might spend all afternoon, you know, not even getting on the phones with anybody. So we want to make this as productive as possible. So for that very reason, we're going to primarily focus on on market, but the things that we're doing also apply with off market. So if you're, if you're direct to seller, uh, maybe you're cold calling. I think what we could do is if we do another one of these guys, probably what we could do is is we could run a list. We could skip trace it. Maybe we have some VAs call that list, get us some warm leads. And then when we jump on the live stream, we're just calling those warm leads. So we're not you know wasting a lot of time cold calling. I think that might be another way that we could do this. But again, on market, we know will work great because they're listed. Hopefully we can get a hold of the agents. 
maybe they don't answer and we got to, you know, follow up, but we'll just kind of work through this. If you guys haven't seen, I did a, um, Tyler helped me do this. We did a, oh yeah, Tyler, Tyler, why don't you jump on and say hi too? We got Tyler. He's the brains behind good. the tech. There he is. Sorry, my lighting's not very good. So Tyler's going to be kind of here with us in the background, making sure that we're organized and he'll be looking at comments that you guys have. He might jump in and, and add to the show today. On that, so Jay, we had, a, we had a question about that lead you were just talking about from uh, from Truman. Uh, Jay asked what tools were used to obtain this lead. Yeah, so it was listed for sale. So this was one where it came out as a distressed property. Truman's got searches. He's got searches in PropWire, Flipster, Redfin, and he's just constantly watching in that particular county. And when that property came for sale, it came up as a distressed property. So We'll show you in a minute. We've got some filters that will find the, the motivated seller type of listings. So it was just one of those. And then he picked up the phone call and you know that's where, that's where that came from. So we'll show you here a couple of tools that work really well for that. Um, so yeah, hope, let me know if that helped with that question. Jared Heller, let's go, baby. Awesome. Jared, uh, so Jared works with Brian quite a bit on deals and uh, one of my favorite people in the world. Jared's really crushing it. Also an on-market genius here, does a lot of on-market with agents. Um, I've done a couple interviews with, with Jared on the channel. So you guys really got to get to know him. Okay. Any other, any other questions, Tyler, or should we sort of jump in? Let's jump in. Okay. So guys, a couple of tools I think is, is PropWire for sure. If you guys aren't using PropWire yet, you really need to start using that. It's, uh, it's kind of my huge project I'm working on right now. It's a software that's got on-market and off-market data. We made it totally free to search and download as many, as many leads as you want. One of our big things is making it really user-friendly, really easy to navigate, and, and then be able to find leads uh, we added a skip trace service, it's really affordable. You can skip trace leads. And one of the things that we added in here, let's go ahead and go to, and we'll start with Macomb. Yeah. We'll go to Macomb, Michigan. Actually, I'm going to make sure I get Macomb County. Didn't you come to Macomb yesterday? Macomb. Okay, here we go. County, Macomb County, Michigan. And... Now I want to go over here. I'll go to lead types and you can see here, we've got all these different leads. So we'll go to MLS active and then we'll just go ahead and right now we'll just focus on, you know, maybe we'll do single family. Let's, let's go ahead and add, let's go ahead and add condos and townhouses. We will probably see some of those well, in, properties that you, what's that? Put any properties on there. I, when I was um, doing comps today and yesterday, I saw a ton of properties on there. Yeah, we're going to look at some active. So we're going to put some filters in here and then we'll go ahead and leave this at owner business. We don't really care who the owner is right now, but you could choose individual or business. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to go to advanced and then down here where it says MLS filters, it gives us three different options. Now these are keyword filters. So what the system does is it's going to look through the descriptions and anything that's put in the listing that would identify it as either investor owned. And these are keywords that talk about either cash flow, rental, income property, you know, where, where it's kind of targeting like a buy and hold. Now there could be language in there that's not a buy and hold, but it's sort of trying to find what types of properties are listed where they're specifically trying to target a landlord. So that's the investor owned filters. Motivated seller would be, if you click on the little thing here, it'll kind of tell you here, this would just be any kind of keyword that's identifying the property as some sort of distress. So must sell, motivated seller, cash offer only. You know, we've got hundreds of keywords we've identified to try to, to try to find those. So for example, let's just go ahead and click on motivated seller and then we're going to save and close. And so right now it's showing us about 105 throughout Macomb County. And on the map here on the left, you can see these little dots. It'll tell us here, you know, if some of these are pending. Um, so what we want to look here, first thing I want to look at here is these cards on the right-hand side. There's some additional information here in these little boxes. You guys see this? This is really valuable because 
this is saying that not only is it for sale, it's a, it's also an absentee owner, meaning that the owner of record does not live in the home and it's free and clear. So that's really great because it just kind of gives us at a, at a snapshot some really, really a lot more information that's helpful, right? So like this one down here is pending, but it's also an auction property. It's an empty nester. Empty nester means that they've owned the property for a certain time frame. I forget. I can look real quick, but it's a long time. That means they might be downsizing or, you know, they're elderly. So they might be looking to, to either downsize or sell uh, and they own it free and clear. Uh, it also tells us the list price and it tells us the price per square foot on the list. Right here, it gives us a little bit of information. If I want to do a deeper dive, I can just click on this and it's going to pull it up and it's going to show us pictures. Here's our description, you know, and we can, from here, we can go down to, this is what's cool here, guys. I might try to make this more prominent, but if you click right here, show more, scroll down a little bit further and it gives us the listing agent. Now, I love this because if you go on Zillow or Redfin or, or one of the other public sites, you've got to, not all the time do they give you the listing agent. A lot of times you got to Google their name, look for them on some website and call, call the office. And here it gives me their phone and office number. And again, that was just under that uh, show more tab right here. So, so again, I go under property, open it up, click right here where it says show more, scroll down a little bit. And uh, there's the listing agent info again. The key to this is the double dip strategy, which is we're going to call the listing agent directly as unrepresented buyers. We're going to tell that agent we're a cash buyer interested in their property, want to make an offer, and hopefully we can build a relationship. Uh, the one thing that is really critical to on market is it's more about the relationship, less about the deal. And when I did, a, I haven't aired this yet on YouTube, but Brian, uh, pull Brian up real quick, Tyler. Brian does a very cool strategy. I love what Brian does. By the way, guys, Brian is just graduated high school like a week ago or something, four or five days ago. Right, Brian? His senior year, so this past year as a senior, he did 11 deals, $92,000 in assignments, all on market. Guys, leave a comment and say, Brian, you're a flipping genius. Because as a, as a high school kid and as a senior high school kid, did 11 wholesale deals, all on market with agents. But what I wanted to share, Brian, was tell us the strategy you do where you're you're really just trying to talk to as many agents as you can and they don't even have to have a distressed listing. You don't even care. Yeah. So um, as I kind of said, you guys know um, my main strategy is just working with agents. But as opposed to um, focusing on let me click on this distressed property on the MLS and just make an offer on it. I don't really care about that because yes, it's possible to get deals like that. As I said, my partner, Jared over there, um, he does it all the time, but for me, it's more worth my time to just vet the agent as fast as possible, know how often that they come across investor properties and then just follow up with them for the future. So for that home that, um, that Jerry pulled up there, it honestly looks like it looks like it's a pretty decent property. Could be a flip, could be not, you know, um, but I'm also indulged into the creative space a little bit. Um, I've done a lot with like sub twos, creative financing, just learned a lot about it. So I call this property and I would say, hey, quick question. I'm an investor in the area. Um, area or would the sellers consider owner financing? And they say no. They, I just ask right off the bat and I set it up to say no because I'm not wasting their time saying, oh, well, what's the deal? It's, it's in the description. They're going to be like, Okay, you're just like, what are you doing? Um, so I'm like, okay, great, no worries, thank you, appreciate it. And then I was like, hey, before I go, um, how I am? I also flip a lot. Uh, you know, how often do you come across these and type of investor properties? And they're like, oh, once a year, twice a year, whatever. Um, and then they tell me that, and based on just how many agents I've vetted, I can tell by their personality type. A lot of them just say, oh, it depends, it depends, it depends. I put them in a section where it's like, I honestly don't know. I have a feeling that they're not doing too many, but you know, you just kind of vet it out. Um, and see how many they actually do get. And then I also ask about uh, their process too, because I've come across a lot of agents say, yeah, I get a couple per year. But then when they get them, I'm never there. So I say, now it seems like you come across these even a couple times a year. When you get one, what's your process? Do you have an existing list of um, buyers that you send them out to? Is it first come first serve or whatever? So I want to see how 
like how often they come across deals and how likely is that I can be the first one to get it. Um, so those are typically like two first things that I ask them. And then it's, um, are you working on anything right now that's coming up that's worth, um, that's worth mentioning about? And those are typically my three go-to questions in and off the phone almost all the time in under three minutes because the first couple of seconds is owner financing? No. And then it's get through his questions. Awesome. I don't want to waste too much of your time, but appreciate it. And I just save their info. So I would be calling all these properties yeah. just for the ages. I don't care about the home at all. I can say, oh, what's the condition, whatever. If it's a good one, I might make an offer, but most of the time, not really. That's awesome. So Brian, do you mind modeling one for us right now? Just a random property right here. Yeah, for sure. Do you want to do the one that you pulled up? I pulled up a different one because that one said it was pending. Okay. So this says TLC, paint, make this your home, great investment property. I think that one's pending. I checked on Redfin. Okay. It could be wrong. Okay. We can try it. There's no. There's only one picture too, so that's even better to if you did actually care to make an offer sometimes. That gives you something to talk about um, yeah. typically. I just ask about that. Um, Anthony, 248. Nice. Hey, Anthony. How's it going? How's your day? It's pretty good. And yours? Awesome. Going pretty good over here. Uh, I see your listing over here on 115 North Tasmania Street. Is that still available? No, that one is pending. Oh, it is? Okay, cool. No worries at all. In the case it falls through, would they uh, consider owner financing at all? Yes. They would? Okay. Have you guys received any offers about owner financing? Uh, no, not yet. You haven't? Okay. Right. So how did that come up in conversation? Were they just like, um, they would entertain it? Did they um, reach out to investors before and have this come up? Or like, how did this come across this plate? Is that being a possibility? Say that again? Yeah, I was curious. Um, did you bring it to them and offer that owner financing was available? Did anybody ever say anything? Because I was just curious about, uh, you know, what their terms would look like if we actually did want to structure something with owner financing. No, we never got to that. No, you we didn't? Got to it, we never, we never All right, sweet. Well, hey, maybe if it does fall through, maybe we can get to that point. <laughs> but sweet. Let me know. Now, before I go, I don't want to waste too much of your time. Um, but how often do you come across investment type properties like this? It just depends uh, very often because I'm licensed in Georgia too. Oh, you are? No, uh, so it just whenever it comes across my desk. Awesome. Sweet. Are you working on anything else right now coming up that may be worth looking at? Yeah, but that's going to be a full price list. It's not going to be a just, uh, small deal like this. Gotcha. Okay, so the stuff you have coming up, it's more like what's asking what it's worth, not discount at all? And Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Well, hey, um, if anything comes up, definitely feel free to save my information. We're doing stuff all the time, whether it's a flip or a buy and hold. Um, but just let me know. Love it. I'll okay. send you a text man for right now. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. A minute, 55 seconds. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. And I swear that is the probably one of three times ever I asked his owner financing a possibility. <laughs> they said, yes. I was like, what? what so I, I I can just play along with it just like actually act like you're interested because then you're not just gonna shut it down so i just made it seem like i carried but it was already pending so it didn't matter i could shut it down pretty quick um but a minute 55 seconds said he comes across often um now for you guys if this is your market you can save their information and just know to based on what he said he comes across them often um so if you make a new relationship i would check in with them soon because that first time they're going to forget about you. So I would say a week and a half check in, but he would be the agent that I would say probably every two weeks check in with him. Um, if he's saying he comes across stuff often. Now that's just no two that's subject to change. A lot of these agents, they're like, Oh, I come across stuff all the time. And then when you start to work with them, they send you deals. They don't know investment numbers. A lot of the times they may send things just 30 K off. And that's like, all right, they may move to like a once every three week or a once every four week follow up type of thing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the process of. So look, yeah, so let's talk about it. Guys, leave a comment and, and ask any questions you had or maybe even some feedback, what you thought was helpful about what Brian just did there. Now, remember, Brian's playing a volume game, okay? He, he doesn't need to be on the phone for a half an hour. Um, he really wants to make the connection, let that agent know. Hey, if you come across something, I'm your guy, you know? So a couple of things that I really liked was when Brian asked him if he would entertain creative, um, like he said, 
nine out of 10 or maybe like 99 out of 100 are going to not even not even know what to say to that. Most agents don't even understand creative. They're not taught creative. It's not even on their radar. Now, this is a low income area and low income areas tend to be way more creative finance friendly because they just do a lot of that because they buy that way. They sell that way. They're working with people that have a uh, low and bad credit because it's hard to sell a $60,000 house, right? So I, it is true that like if you go to the Detroits, this is kind of like a suburb of, of Detroit, like a lower income market. You'll see in the lower price points that creative financing is way more open, right? They do lease options and land contracts and all kinds of stuff that's creative. Whereas in the higher end, you know, more retail neighborhoods, it's less and less common. That's probably part of it too. Yeah. But what I liked is, Brian, the comment I wanted to make was when he said, yes, they would entertain creative. Uh, what I love is that you just quickly, you quickly adjusted your script, right? Your conversation based on the information you gathered. And that's being good on the phones. Good on the phones is you're able to listen, assimilate information that they give you and then take the conversation in the direction you want it to go. So what you said was, I thought was great. You said, how did that come up that that seller would be open to creative? And he was kind of like, what? And you were like, yeah, is what was that something he offered previously? Or, you know, where did that come from? And he and the answer was, well, we never got that far because, you know, we took an offer. So we never really got that far. But but he was aware that that seller would entertain creative financing. And so what my point with that is just that you were able to, you didn't just say, oh, okay, well, in the future, if you get deals, you know, call me, which, which is easy to do, right? You, you want to take whatever answers you get from them when you're asking questions and now use that information to gather more information or ask more questions or find out more what's going on. Yeah. And that's, that's you, really helpful. Being a better listener helps you with the agent as opposed to because a lot of things I, I've i tested a lot of times. I just go, it's like if I went straight to the agent before and said, hey, so what about this home or whatever? Awesome. So so how often do you get these? And then it seems like an interview. If I ask too many questions, agents are just like, okay. Like I can just tell they're answering me, but they're not connecting with me. If they're, I said, okay, yeah, if it falls through, maybe we can do something. And then I pivoted. So it I, I fell through with my intentions. I asked about it and that was, it looked like that was my intention, even though it wasn't, but he didn't even recognize that at all there. So yeah, just being able to pivot. And eventually if you do this in, in volume, there's only so many things that people are going to say. There's probably only 10, 10 counter 15 things that agents are going to say. You, so you just know how to work around all of them and pivot back. But yeah. yeah. Exactly. So Johnny, since this is in the market you work, I would, I would write, put in your CRM right now. You're using Flipster. So put in the Flipster, you know, the agent information, yeah. um, any kind of trigger, any kind of reminder that's going to trigger you in your follow-up. So like, I would just leave a note that says called about Tasmania pending agent o open to creative, um, open for me, open to talk to me about future distressed properties. And then didn't he also say, Brian, he works in another market? Did he say Georgia? He said Georgia. He's licensed in Georgia as well. Okay. We don't care. We'll look at something in Georgia, right? Who cares? Yeah. There are no yeah. state lines anymore in real estate. <laughs> you know, maybe make a note. Also also does Georgia. Um, and then set a reminder, follow up in one week, right? Yeah. Like that's, that's just all we're doing here. So I also want to take note of this um, because as we're going into this, if people are taking note, my biggest, one of my biggest mistakes is once I ended these calls, it's important to note of what you talked about, but don't over note. I, after every call, I probably like over noted a lot of that stuff. And you got to think what is really, really important. And what I narrowed down was the things that were important as he's familiar with creative and um, he's open to doing, uh, he gets deals often and then follow up once every two weeks, like literally three things. Cause that's all that matters when you're going to call these agents is knowing how often to follow up with them. And if they have deals, like how often they have deals, that, that's really all that matters. All, all that side conversation, like, yeah, you know, I might do this part time or whatever, like that you might yeah. tell agents I used to be in whatever I used to write all that down. And it, it cost me so much time. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. And, but for this one specifically, um, if you care about this deal, I would no, no, take note of this property address and say, might be open to creative if falls through. 
that's it. That's literally it. Uh, but if it's like a distressed one, it looks, if you have, feel like it's a hot deal, that's going to go quick. And even if it fell through, you're still not going to get the offer. Don't even worry about the property. Really narrow down as little information as possible. And that's what I narrowed down to. That was my biggest lesson. I wasted, because I only worked like three hours a day because um, I was going to school full time. And after school, half of my time was spent writing down agent's info. And now I regret it. Complete complete waste of time. Now I'm sifting back through my old list, revetting these people and putting them into a sheet, just bringing them even way faster. So it's not worth it. Volume will cancel all your mistakes in the game. So that was one of my big takeaways. Yeah, that's really good. Pre Thank you for sharing that. So guys, are you clear on that? He's on his process. I think there was a question up there. Tyler, did, did we answer that? Uh, I think so. Here it is again from uh, Rogelio. What would be the next step when offering creative? So I indulge into the creative space a lot. Um, I actually got an internship uh, with creative financing for the last quarter of my high school and stuff. And for me, I kind of put creative on the back burner as like a last option um, because I was focused on getting the wholesale deals. But if they really did want to do something creative, um, the next step would be what are their terms? You would need to know, you know, how long they're looking to um, be open to owner financing, uh, what their payments would look like per month and all that sort of stuff. And the key is a lot of times the agent may say, well, you bring the terms. And what I always say is, look, I they're going to be the bank. Whenever, whenever I'm going to get a mortgage, I don't come in saying what I want. I would tell them no interest rate, but like I make a joke out of it. But like if they're wanting to do this, tell me what they want because we have a million buttons we can tweak the interest rate, the term, the payments, all that sort of stuff. And eventually get them to stay there. Now it's very rare, extremely rare with, especially with agents as an intermediary, as a block between you and the seller for a, a creative deal to go through with an agent. I did one and I'm shocked I did it. Um, it works. I tried, I focused on it for months heavy and I realized that like it's same thing with the on market stuff. I could make offers on all these homes. It all works, but it's a matter of what your intentions are. My intentions are this year to build my income and that's not going to get me anywhere. Uh, by doing creative. If you just want to start picking up properties casually to, you know, put to your portfolio, that may be awesome for you, but you just got to align with what you're doing, but that would be the next step. Just get the terms from the seller. Awesome. Let's do this now. Uh, Tyler, put my screen back up and Truman, this is your agent on our deal. She sent over that other deal in Warren. On Columbia? Or Columbus? Columbus. Yeah. On Columbus. So yeah. This is a property here that uh, is one of Truman's leads with, with an agent that uh, is really awesome. So it's this little house here and I did uh, what Brian's been talking about here. I asked the agent if they were open to creative. And so what she said was, yeah, he would do creative and it would be if you did 40,000 down. Okay, now <laughs> this is a little house here and on PropWire, I put the address in and looked it up. And the story here, as you can see here, this sold for 85. And uh, Jane here bought this house for 85. And she's got a conventional loan for 41250 And they're look, she's looking for around 80000 is what she's trying to sell it for. So what the, what the agent said is they said, you know, she'll probably take like 80. It's super clean. She just doesn't want to be a landlord anymore. She bought it to be a, a landlord. There's a tenant in the property for whatever reason, she doesn't want to be a landlord anymore, but it's, it's really clean. Like apparently it's, you can just take it over, keep the tenant. I don't know a whole lot of deals about the rental agreement with that tenant or what they're paying or anything. But when she said, uh, yes, creative 40,000 down the, then it would be sub two, right? Because there's an existing loan of 40, a 41 right here. So now I get what she, where she came up with her number. She basically wants her full price, cash in the difference, take over the loan. Now that might be that might be cool for somebody because they're like, hey, you know, I pick up a rental. Yeah, I got to put forty thousand down, but I'll take over this loan. Um, of actually, it's probably going to be quite a bit less because you look here at the date here. If this is if this is right, um, you know, several years ago. So. I don't know if that's the same loan because she just bought it. So that does, that's probably not the loan she's in. One of the cool things about PropWire guys is if you go to the owner tab, it'll tell you how many properties they own. 
And I love this feature because it tells me what kind of level investor they are. So it's, just, so it's a mom and pop rental. You want to call this agent, Truman? We're and they give us a... Yeah, let's talk about the owner financing, what's going on there. She's really pressing for an offer because they have another offer that's conventional and they're trying to kick around. But I, I want to hear you guys. I want you guys to hear this conversation with this agent. And then when we're done with this property, we can ask her about your deal. And uh, I just I have an update on that. She said, oh, you got an update? She said, offer is closed today. They'll let us know the next few days. So. Oh, come on. Are you kidding? <laughs> I was hoping we could close that on stream. Well, it's, they're not going to tell us today is what she said? Yeah. This really bank is unreal. Yeah, so let's, let, yeah, Dang. let's, let's, let's call her though. And, uh, let's call her though and see what she says about this property. Kind of get a better idea. This is Krista. Krista, hi, it's Jerry. Hey, Jerry. I'm here with Truman. Hello. Hi. So tell us what, what's going on again. You, you're kind of under the gun on Columbus, right? You're looking because they want to take an offer. Is that what's going on? Yeah. So he has an offer for just under asking. It's a uh, conventional. And I think he said, what did I say? 40,000 down is what they're putting down. On the conventional offer? Yeah, on the conventional offer. Why are they putting so much down? I have no idea. I think that's what the lady wants. Yeah, but what does she care if she's getting a lot if they're getting a loan? I don't know. She's 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 weird. I get because she's a, a funny one. Yeah. Um the seller. He sold, yeah, she he sold her this property not too long ago, and then she's rented it for like three months and then wants nothing to do with renting anymore. So yeah. Okay. Which happens all the time. People think landlording's this wonderful thing and then they quickly find out it's not so great. Yeah, I think she put like thirty thousand into it, and then she's selling it for ten thousand more than what she paid for it. It's showing that she bought it for what eighty five? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she bought it for eighty five. She put thirty into it. Yep, she put about thirty thousand into it, and then she's selling it for ten more. Okay. Hmm. She just wants out. Yeah. So, so I think that's why she wants, you know, she, she, she's preferring a cash deal, but then she wants a certain amount down. So how would that work? Does, what's her financing? Does she have an existing loan? I don't know. He didn't say that to me. The, um, and I know she was even willing to do a land contract with 40,000 down. And I think that's how that all came out. So, Yeah. Okay. So then what would the price be if you put, if you did the land contract? Like, let's say you, let's say you did what she wanted and put 40,000 down. What sale price would she be looking for? She wants for the land contract. Yeah. She, would, she wanted 40,000 down and then the rest of it with it with 9%. And I'll have to ask him what he, what the payout amount or the time frame she wanted. The balloon. Yeah. The balloon. Um, mm -hmm. But that would be on what? 110? I'm not sure. I'll have to ask okay. him. Okay. Okay. He didn't give me all those details. Yeah. He was just rattling a bunch of stuff off. Mm -hmm. And what's that tenant paying? That tenant is paying a little under a thousand, but it's, I think he said the rent was supposed to be 1200 and it has the certs through the city. But, but why, are, why are they not paying 1200 then? I don't think she could afford to pay 1200. Oh. So she dropped it and then she wasn't paying. So she's just done. And they, and need, then, they still need evicted or they're going to be out soon. Well, they had a court date to evict her, and the lady's just um, going willingly, and she's moving in with family members, so she'll be out by the 17th. So your first eviction, and you're out of the rental business. <laughs> someone <laughs> forgot to tell her. <laughs> someone forgot to tell her that evicting tenants like is kind of normal. <laughs> you play, right. play, you got to play the long game with rentals, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's, this is why I, Krista, this is why I flip houses, right? You don't have to deal with this drama. 
<laughs> no, I, that's why I don't do rentals. <laughs> that's funny. But 40,000 down, man, that's a lot down on a land contract. I mean, usually you put yeah, 10, is. 10% down, you know? Well, and she's being, she's being, I think she's being very unrealistic. So, and, and he was rattling a bunch of stuff off now. I, and I'm not even sure if this guy's putting 40,000 down on a conventional, because that makes no sense to me. He was like 40,000 on a land contract. And, and I'm like, okay. He's like, she'll take 45. I don't think this guy's putting 45,000 down on a conventional. No way. Why would you do that? He just rattled a whole bunch of numbers off at me. Okay. In, in a short period of well, time last night. Yeah, so I don't think, Krista, this one's going to fit. I mean, because like what what I would need to do is buy it at enough of a discount to where, right. you know, it's a great deal. Maybe I'll overpay a little if I don't have to put a lot down. That That's where creative comes in. Like you can pay a lot more with creative, but not when you're putting 40000 down. Then then Because you're tying the cash up. You're tying all that cash up. I, it just, so that's where, I understand that. otherwise I'll just, you know, I need to go back to cash and just be a super low offer, which she doesn't want either because it's no. it's fairly updated or it is updated. So I think maybe just if she, her best, best probably to take that other offer, that conventional offer. Yeah. And then we're supposed to get three others this week. I don't, I mean, it's already Thursday and the bank hasn't released them to us. So let's um, go. We're ready. Truman, sit, so Truman's ready. sitting here right now, twiddling his thumbs, Krista with nothing to do. <laughs> I have so many investors that have been like, where are they? Where are they? And I'm like, the banks are taking forever. They just, I think they just have so much inventory. They just are so slow. So, Man, that's um, so maddening. As soon as I get them, I'll send them over to you. And I know some of them are going to be coming over in pretty decent condition. So hopefully okay. they're not in horrible shape like that. You know, are we able to, let me ask you this. When you, when you send those to us, how much time from then till you list them, how much time will that be? As soon as we get them, he usually gives them right to his assistant to oh, put in the okay. system. But she she sends us an email right away. I'm putting this in the system today. So she sends it to us and I send them out immediately. Is there so any way we could get like a day or two head start on the competition? Uh, typically we don't even have that. Well before okay. she puts it in. That would be awesome. Because he usually has her put it in like right away. So as soon as he gets the release, he's like, put this in now. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I've so got, then I've got street names, but I don't have physical addresses yet. Yeah. Um, okay. Well then Truman, as soon as we get that, like text us when you send that so we can be like right on it. Okay. Cause, our, cause our, what would be ideal is, you know, you write the offer for us and represent us. And then like the minute those are available, you know, we've got our offers in. Yeah, because you've already done your research. Yeah, like I said, we'll send our guy out there. We'll do a quick walkthrough. We'll run our numbers. We'll get you. We'll get you our cash offers and be. I, I mean, I'll maybe with her today and see okay. if she has the addresses yet on the three that are that were supposed to come to us yeah. this week. Because typically, when they get to that point, they're they've released the addresses to us. Um, so let Perfect. me see if she has the addresses on those, so that you can at least do your research on them. And um, go from there. Okay, great. That's awesome. We'd love that. And then I'll send those over. And then, yeah, today the the L Ray, the I think it's yeah. five o'clock today. The bank closes the highest and best for the offers. Oh, Here's okay. Submitted. Yeah. So they they had a forty eight hour um, highest and best that they did. So I submitted your highest and best, kept it the same, and then. Um, so hopefully they're quick on it. When I went on there, there was only three that were highest of us and they were all conventional except for yours. So, so those, said, those were, come through your office or they can get submitted some other way? No, they get submitted through the bank site. But how would someone else submit an offer if you're, if you have a listing? They go right on the um, bank site. It's a website that they use. Oh, okay. So then there could be thank you to something different. Are they I can I was able to see what was at the top. Okay. And those are are those like other buyers agents? Yeah. Okay. Weird. I did not know that. All right. Yeah. But those were conventional and we're cash and we're the we're the best cash offer right now. Correct. And we have till five o'clock today. Yeah, nothing else has come in. I've had I've had her looking for me. (laughs) But somebody could 
backdoor through the site and put a cash offer in. That's possible, right? Well, I've had her looking for me. And I had okay. Her doing heads up, so. Okay. <laughs> she said mine's still the highest, so. That's right, Truman. Highest cash offer. All right. Well, we're, but, so will you know right at five? No, they're going to oh. review everything and go through it. So hopefully it won't take more than a couple days. But at five, we'll know that there's no more offers on the table. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, then at least we'll know that it's closed down. And it's now closed. now it's between us and some conventional offers. Correct. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to count. As soon as I hear, I'll let you know. Yeah. Appreciate that. We're going we're gonna to count our chickens before they've hatched and assume that we got the deal. That's what we're going to do over here. I'm hoping so. This market's been weird around here. <laughs> totally. I know. It's a weird time. It's a weird time to be in real estate, for sure. It sure is. But there's enough to go around. Let's all make some money. Yeah, exactly. The Michigan market's really weathering the correction pretty good, I think. Yeah. No? It's, no, it's, it's been weird. Stuff it's doesn't been sit long. Years. There's Stuff doesn't sit long. No, it's not sitting long at all, but that's the problem is, you know, there's a lot of people out there, but, you know, a lot of people that need homes can't get them because there's a lot of, you know, investors that are buying them. Yeah. Which, you know, is good for the investor. They're getting what they need and they're flipping them or they're, you know, putting them out there to rent. But, you know, we're having a lot of difficult times for, you know, a lot of first time home buyers that are trying to find a home, they can't get it. Or we have people yeah. that are trying to move and they can't find a house. So they're losing the sale on their house mm -hmm. because they can't get a house. Yeah. So it's yeah. just kind of a trickle effect. Yeah. It's just a low inventory problem. Yep. Yeah. There's not a lot of inventory. Low, low inventory and high interest exactly. rates. Yeah. Low inventory, exactly. high interest rates makes a weird combo. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Well, we're, we're super excited. We'll, um, we'll be in touch probably tomorrow or whenever you hear back. Yeah, but I would. Hear back soon. I would say on this little Warren house, though, I would say it's just probably not a good fit. Okay. Yeah. But no but most of the time, I mean, most of the time we can get to something like an, at least a number. It might not work, but we'll. I don't. I don't want there to ever be a property that you need an offer on, like for an investor, and and we not be able to make that for you. You know what I mean? Well, and this lady's very picky, and he came. He came right out the gate telling all of us that he's like. She's a real pain in the ass. He's like, I'm going to be honest. And she's being unrealistic. He's like, somebody help me sell this. And I'm like, well, okay. yeah. Yeah. Let me I'm coach like, you. This, this and that. <laughs> yeah. So it's the typical, the seller wants everything. You know, they want, they want their cake and eat it too. Kind of thing. Well, he flat out just told her cause she didn't even want to take this conventional offer. She's like, I want cash. I want cash. And he's like, nobody else is coming to the table. And he said, so you, you might just want to take this one. You want to be done with it. So just, you know, you might just want to take it. Mm. So, yeah. I don't know. He was, unless if you want to take less, you don't want to take less. You, want, you know, and so he flat out told her. So she's like, she put a deadline as of what, like, three or four today, four o'clock today. Okay. So, I don't know. Yeah. Well, keep us posted if something falls through. I will, for sure. Great. And then I'll try to get those addresses for you today and then send them over. If she doesn't have them today, I'll try to see if she can get them tomorrow. Okay. Okay. But I'll send them over as soon as I have them. Awesome. Thank you, Krista. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Now um, let's get some feedback guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I love, love, love uh, agents. I just, I just, I, want to make a relationship with them. I feel like I can talk to them, be fun, be somebody they want to work with. Now, I spent way more time than I ever would spend on this little Warren house. Not because like, heck no, are we putting 40000 down? The price they're asking for is like retail. It's not a deal. She kept just texting about it and it's one of her properties and it's an agent that we're really trying to build a relationship with. So I'm trying to give her the time she wants for this property. But like, otherwise I'd follow Brian's strategy, which is like, I got to get off the phone because while I'm talking to her about this, this no deal, right? I could be on the phone making three more relationships. So again, I just wanted to kind of model that for you as to why and explain why it's because this agent's really important for us to cultivate a relationship with. 
And she really was hoping that we could give her an offer on this house. Yeah, that's that definitely sense. true. With like, it, there's some agents where you can just start to tell, like, she's very open to working with you, being very nice, generous. Like, if you spend that time, that's what's going to make you get in front of her. So doing the same thing for every agent is necessarily at some point, like you do just want to be friends with them and make jokes like Jerry did. That's, that's definitely awesome too. So yeah, 100% agree with that. Yeah. So Truman come up here. T- let's talk, tell everybody a little bit about this deal. Kind of like, um, on all right. Yeah. On all right. Yeah. Like how you found it, how you worked it. It's really good. There we go. So yeah, I saw it. It was 217 and I ran the numbers. I totally, overshot the ARV. <laughs> and so that's why I offered 160. I brought to Jerry. And what, what, what'd you think the ARV was? Around 300. Okay. And what made you, were you looking at, what were you looking at? Do you remember? What? Like, uh, there was, there was very limited stuff. comps. Yeah. It was right next to a, a major road. So that like, already cut off half of the comps and it was, it was kind of a dead spot. So I had a hard time comping, but I brought it to you. I said, I I get it for 160 is that deal. You said no deal, period. <laughs> um, needs 75, period. Back end is like 250, period. I was like, oh man, I thought I had something because I got a major discount. So basically, what that did is gave me like a, a blueprint of what I needed. So I plugged in those numbers 250 back end, 75,000 rehab. And you did the 70% formula? Uh, put it in your flipster calculator. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that gave me like eighty nine thousand buy price. Uh huh. So then uh, I was like low eighties. I te- I texted. I thought the deal was already over. Yeah, me so too. I, I, was, I was trying to like kind of get out of it, being respectfully like, yeah, I need to be low eighties for it to work. And um, I was like, what? And she said, we have a conventional offer at eighty eight. And this is texting. Yeah, texting. Because yeah, okay. I thought it was over. I just wanted to get out of it respectfully. Yeah. Um, so I said, would A2000 be competitive? I kind of just chose that number. Yeah. Like, yeah, when you told so, me 82, I'm like, what? Where'd you yeah, get 82? Yeah, <laughs> the real number was 89. And I kind of just came up with 82 to create a little spread. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, if I, if I came in at A2 cash, would that be competitive against the 88 conventional? Uh, she said yes, and so I was like, "Oh wow!" Like I wasn't <laughs> expecting that, so I, I didn't want to be greedy and like see how much I could go lower. But I, I texted Jerry. I said, "What if I got it for eighty-two? He was like, "Yes." <laughs> and so and the next day, he sent your guy yeah. to go look at it. Was yeah. So, a- so let's explain that what I did there. So. Um, this is a really cool strategy, guys. I hope you kind of can, hope I can explain this a little bit. So when Truman found out that she would entertain 82, she actually thought 82 might be considered. The bank would actually look at that. It's competitive to a conventional offer. Conventional means they got to go get a loan. It would never get a conventional loan because this house needs too much work. Like the furnace doesn't work and it's just completely, there's, there's not, there's a 0% chance that even if the bank took that conventional offer, that it would it would pass. Yes, yeah, this and they know and they kind of know that. Yeah, the bank would rather take cash. You said. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So then we got like a we got like a verbal ish, you know, at eighty two. Now we haven't signed anything, we haven't written anything. So when I get to that point where I'm like close, and I'm like right there, that's a good time to get some eyes on it. So, cause pictures will tell you a lot, but you know, there's, there's just so much more you want to see. So immediately when he told me 82, I send my boots on the ground and this is a, this is a contractor. Uh, it's actually, it's John, it's actually a buyer that he will go look at anything for me and then he'll give me his number. So I like those relationships. If you don't have that relationship, build a relationship with a local contractor. But what I like to do is I like to find a really amazing, awesome cash buyer. So another flipper and he flips and keeps. And create a relationship where I say to them, hey, if I get really close on a deal, can I call you and you go look at it and tell me your number? Now, not all cash buyers will do that. Some of them, they don't want to waste their time, but he will. He'll drop everything. He'll go look at it. And I could send him, and I try not to waste his time. So I don't want to do this unless I'm close. See, that's the thing. When we were at 160, I would never send him because why would I waste his time to go out to a property when it's way off? 
But when I'm right there and I'm close and they say yes, or we're countering and we're just kind of like at the finish line, I now I still may not get the deal, but I'm close, right? That's my point is I'm close or we might be close. You know, now I'll send him. It's a good use of time now. So he goes out and looks at it and his initial response is, uh, and I hadn't told him 80. Wait, I, I think I did tell him 82. Or I did tell him we had it at 82. So I told him 90. Okay. So I said, uh, I said, yeah, I need to be, or 95. I told him 95. I said, yeah, I need to be, that's right. I told him 95. I said, I'm thinking like 95 would be a number I could get this for. So he goes out and looks at it. He's like, man, that thing needs a ton of work. It's got this neighbor's house. It's on a, it's on like, he's a typical cash buyer. I actually recorded the conversation, which is hilarious because he's just beating me up, beating me up, beating me up. Right. All cash buyers are going to do this. They're going to tell you all the things that are wrong and why they need a better deal. And so I knew that. So I'm just letting him talk and explain all the problems and stuff. And I said, uh, I said, John, I might be able to get this to you for you at, at 95. And he's like, well, man, I got to I got to go back over there. If you're serious about it, if you think you can get this deal, I got to go back over there. So he goes back over there and he spends some time and walks through it and does all this other stuff. Meanwhile, while he's doing that, you know, we're working. We actually got on the phone then. So explain what we did then. So we got on the phone with her, with Krista, with oh, me. Yeah. First time I'm yeah, talking yeah. to her. And then and we asked her to send over any properties because she was really nice and good to work with. They're talking about. Yeah. Well, where we actually made the offer at 75 then. Oh, yeah. 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 So we we basically I got on the phone with her because at that point it was 82. Yeah. And so yeah, I basically you worked it down. Yeah. Like, she was like on work. the same page. Yeah. She was like, oh, I totally see that. Yeah. So I kind of did the same thing. I took the information I had gathered and kind of said, oh, well, it's got all these problems and, you know, it doesn't have really great curb appeal and blah, blah, blah. You know, can we get it a little bit lower? And I'm, and I'm just asking her, can we get it a little bit lower? And she's like, all right, well, like where? And I said, you know, 75 would be awesome. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, let's, let's put it in. Let's write it up. Let's put it in. You, I think you got a shot at that. And she's not telling me for sure we got it because it's not her decision. It's the bank's. But she's kind of coaching us. She's like, okay, well, here's where I got a conventional offer. We got a, we got, we did get a cash offer that's lower. And so she's like wanting us to win. That's the point here. She wants us to win. She's on our team, right? So then we make the 75 offer. She sends over a DocuSign. We, we sign that. We give her a proof of funds. And this was like, how long ago now? Probably a week ago. Yeah, it's been like a week We've of like waiting. waiting. And now we got to wait more. Now so. we have <laughs> Now we got to wait more. Well, so then John, the uh, cash buyer, he goes back over there and, and um, he's like, well, how low can I get it? I need a better deal, man. I'll do it. But man, 90, I can't do 90. I can't do 95. So he's like, Jerry, I, I want to be at like 80. Go back to the, I told him it's a bank property. He's like, go back to the bank and get them down lower. I, I want it at 80. And so again, we're trying to get it at 75. Now I think we could probably get him up to 85. And in the meantime, now we've sent some other cash buyers over there and we're, we haven't pushed it yet because I don't want to, we don't want to over market when we don't actually have it, Yeah, true. but I'll call a few people I know and, and have a relationship with maybe just to kind of feel it out. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Now, when she comes back and says, it's yours, then we're going to try to push real hard and find, you know, a higher, a higher paying cash buyer. But I think, I think we'll be able to find somebody 85, but you know, Truman, we might get lucky and hit. Higher, you know, yeah. all uh, depends on finding the right buyer for it. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, he said he'd be able to call whenever. So. Oh, he said call him whenever? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. what, want to call him? Sure. Let's call him. We got a couple questions here, Jerry, if you want to just want to yeah, take a second. For a few yeah, minutes. let's do that. Yeah, good point. So, first up's here from Marcus. Is it possible to anticipate an estimate on an assignment fee when doing creative finance options? Like, is it for cash offers? Is it possible to anticipate an estimate on an Yeah, so, okay, so great question here. Um, Tyler, I'm gonna pull up my other calculator here. Can you see this on my screen? So the one on the right, this one here. So this is a creative finance calculator, guys. I've uh, I've done a video about this, but it's got a it's got a seller finance and a subject too. And the way this calculator works here is it'll it'll help you figure out what is a good deal on creative, 
and it will actually tell you what you can get in an assignment fee. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this right now, but if you guys, Tyler, maybe you can find that video. It's the creative financing calculator video. Yeah, I'll find it and send the link. And put that in the chat. But I did a video. I explained exactly how to do this, how to, how to run, how to input all the numbers, and it will tell you what you can get in a wholesale fee on creative. Uh, Brian, you might really like this too, but basically what it's doing is it's figuring out your, your, your cash flow, your NOI, um, and then it lets you put in existing information or helps you create a new loan if it's a, if it's a seller finance. And then it's got some rules that we follow where the market will pay you X amount for a creative finance deal. The two things are how much cash flow is it creating and what's the entry fee to get into the deal. As long as those two things align, you can carve out a really good uh, assignment fee wholesaling your creative finance deal. So you don't have to keep creative finance deals, right? Like you could, and a lot of people do, but most people think that creative is a hold only strategy. It's not. You can, you can actually wholesale creative for a premium. So you guys that don't really, aren't really set up yet to hold stuff, then you can just wholesale those. Okay. Question for Jerry or Brian. Uh, I really find that I'm the weakest with my lack of understanding on creative finance options. What would you recommend for me to find a good educational video on this? Yeah. I mean, you could definitely watch the masterclass I did on my channel with Pace Morby. He's like the creative finance king. Uh, him and I did like a 20 video series where we went through basically all the different creative finance strategies. Um, I talk a lot about creative finance on my channel. So I've got some great videos. The one that we just referenced is really good. In fact, I think of all, you know, I'm a little biased here, <laughs> but I think of all the creative finance videos, the one I did, I simplify the whole thing. I really break it down into the least you need to know, the exact information you need to gather from the seller or the agent, and then plug that into this calculator and it'll do the math for you and tell you exactly where you need to be. Okay. So it's, it's really good to kind of get, get your feet wet on creative because creative is one of those things where you, we can, you can definitely overcomplicate it, uh, over compl complicate it, and it is an advanced strategy. So there's so many different things, but really 80% of creative finance is going to be either seller finance or subject to probably more than 80%, probably 95% of deals are either going to be one of those two options, seller finance when they own it free and clear or subject to when there's an existing loan. So if you learn those two and you know how to plug in and gather the right information, then that's going to cover most of your creative finance deals. Okay, question here, Jerry, where do you get your VAs for cold calling from? Is there a company you use? Yeah, I like Call Geeks. That's uh, Carlos Ray's company. They're really great. They have pre-trained VAs for anything and everything you want. You can put them on the phones. You're going to pay a lot higher for a VA that you put on the phones for cold calling. They can do low-level tasks like um, texting and you know, managing your, your spreadsheets, follow-up stuff. Those are going to be a lot cheaper. But uh, if you go to Call Geeks, you can, I think if you Google them, I, I could probably find the link for that, but, uh, but they're great. And you just, you basically just tell them what you want and then, and then they'll have a VA for you ready to go kind of thing. It's really cool. Uh, if you're a Flipster subscriber, we also have VAs in Flipster. Now, they're not specifically trained for cold calling, but they're, they're really good as well. Uh, so if you're a subscriber of Flipster, then there's a built-in VA service. It's really great because you can manage the VA right in Flipster and you can, you can trial Flipster. If you go to joinflipster.com, you can do a seven day free trial and, and see some of the cool things in there. Uh, that's the CRM that, that, that I built that we use and it's got, you know, some really cool things other than data, which you can now get on PropWire for free. Flipster also has proof of funds letters. It's got funding solutions. It's got all your deal analyzers. It's got digital contracts. It's like the all-in-one platform for wholesaling and flipping. So, you know, you guys that are really serious about doing the business can, can check that out. Just to follow up to that last question and then we'll uh, move on. Are the VAs pertained for cold calling? Yeah, yeah. So, so if you go to Call Geeks and you tell them, I want a VA that I can put on the phone for cold calling. They will give you a specific VA train for cold calling. Now they might not be specific to your, your processes, but they're, they're going to be tr trained on cold calling. So they're going to sound good on the phone. They're going to know what to do on the phone. 
you know, you'll have to do a little bit of training with them, but they're ready to go. Yeah. So should we use Flipster or prop wire? So I get this question a lot right now because on one hand, it looks like two competing softwares and it, the only thing that's really the same is the data. Um, both provide data. Uh, but Flipster has all the other tools for flippers and wholesalers. So it's got a CRM that you can manage all your contacts. You can upload your properties. You can do websites. Like I said, you can do all your digital contracts. Um, it's got proof of funds, custom proof of funds letters for your offers. It's got a workflow to move your deal from A to Z. Whereas PropWire is just data and, and skip tracing now. Um, you can now comp on PropWire, which is cool. But PropWire is never going to be a CRM for flippers or wholesalers. That's that's why we built Flipster. So hopefully that kind of answers that. Great. We'll jump back in. I'll shoot up any more questions as we get them. Okay. So let's call um, let's call Brian. Who's Brian? So cash this buyer. is a cash buyer I know that uh, Truman has been texting and sent over to the property. So he went and looked at uh, Truman's deal. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, he went and looked at Truman's deal, and they, you guys have been texting. So where are you at with him, Truman? Um, I think we pulled up. He's been eyeing it for a while, right? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get it. Oh, he was trying to get the wholesale deal? Well, it's been vacant and stuff forever. So he was like, he knows all about the property because he lives in the same town, which is kind of cool. So what's the update where you left off with him, Truman? Just said he went and looked at um, it, right? He says, are you guys looking at the JV? Um, what's the asking price? And I was like, can we call you about it in a few hours? Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. So he went and looked at this property. He basically said to Truman, hey, you want a JV on it? Now, I think we call him and we find out what are you looking to, are you look because he flips too, I'm pretty sure. So let's, it sounds like though he wants to wholesale it. So I'm thinking, let's call him and see what he says about it. Yeah. Hello, Brian. Hey, Brian, it's Jerry Norton, and I got Truman here with me. Hi, Brian. How's it going, Jerry? Good. How you doing, buddy? Doing well. Hey, today's actually my 40th birthday. Wow. Happy birthday. Thanks, man. What are you doing talking to me on your birthday? Oh, it's an honor to talk to you on my birthday. <laughs> you got anything fun planned today? Uh, we're going to go out to eat with uh, the parents, uh, wife and kids and, and parents. We're going to go get a steak dinner. And then my mom made a homemade carrot cake for after dinner. Nice. So let me ask you a question. My birthday's next week, right next to Father's Day. Do you get do you get screwed being so close to Father Day, like Father's Day like me? You know, where it's just combined? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit? I'm not complaining, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, congratulations. 40 is a big milestone. Thanks, man. You're only as old as you feel, though. Yeah, absolutely. I keep trying to lie to myself and saying I'm young. <laughs> That's right. Hey, so we're uh, we're actually doing a live stream right now on YouTube. So you're uh, you're uh, you're streaming on YouTube. Okay, cool. I'm working with Truman and and some other younger guys. We're doing like we're just kind of doing wholesaling live, and we thought, hey, let's call Brian about this deal and kind of see where he's at, what he's thinking. Um, it was funny because I thought of you and then when I, I looked up in my notes and it, and it said you were from Chesterfield, I forgot where you were from. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's where our deal is. He's got to know about this property or at least have some interest. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally a, just a few blocks away. It's, it's right, pretty much right down the street. We're, so we're like, um, we're like 99% uh, with the bank on it. Okay. We're, we should know, you know, they're really slow over there, but they're closing down the, the offers, you know, today in a minute and looks like we're in the running. So we're, we're pretty confident we've got the deal. Okay. Um, we'll know for sure in a, you know, by the end of the day or maybe tomorrow or whatever. But uh, 
so we haven't pushed it out yet. And then we thought of you and are you looking, are you doing some flips right now over there? Or is this something that you, you might know a buyer and we, we JV what's, where are you at with it? What's your interest? We do have a couple flips going on. We have uh, one in Roseville um, and one in Detroit at the moment. Okay. Um, our, fir- our first flip was out in Casco near Richmond, and that went really well. So we started Good. to get into some more. Um, but for the most part, I mean, 98% of uh, the deals, uh, the leads that, that we get locked up, we're uh, wholesaling them. Okay. Okay, great. So you're primarily still wholesaling. I, I, couldn't, I was trying to remember because I knew you did some flips too, but great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're trying to just, you know, cherry pick the, the best ones and then and the rest were we've been wholesaling. Yeah, great. Great. Well, what do you think on this one? You you think you might have some some buyers that would be interested? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh it's a great location. Um I think we could find uh as long as you know the prices, uh you know, the numbers make sense. I I'm, I mean that's with any deal, but yeah, the location the location I don't think it I don't think it should be an issue at all to find a buyer pretty quickly. What uh, what do you think the numbers are on it? What do you think the back end ARV is? Oh, let me pull my computer up here. It is a crawl, which I wish it was on a basement. Yeah, that is an issue in in, uh, in Michigan, which I'm sure you're, you're yeah. aware of. But it's got the big garage, so that's good. Yeah, almost an it's acre. A, it's a good it's a good open layout. Yeah, needs a so, needs a full reno. It's a big rehab. Yeah, for sure. What do you what yeah. what are you penciling on the rehab? What number are you thinking it's gonna be? Let me pull my computer up here real quick. The uh the back door was actually unlocked, so I locked that up. Oh thank you. Yeah, no problem. Freaking John, I'm gonna kill him. Remind me Truman to chew him out. <laughs> Cause I bet you he was the last one in there. I sent my contractor over there to look at it. The door that the lockbox was on, that was locked, but there, there, was, oh. there, there was like the side door. There's a front door, a side door, and a back door. And the back door, the, the lock was kind of funky, and uh, I noticed it was unlocked, but I got it, I got it locked up. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Now, let's see. I'll get in here. Yeah, I was just walking in the, the door to the office here. I, I ran and looked at that one, and then looked at had another appointment right after that, and then I just got back, so I just got to pull my computer up. Gotcha. Yeah, about uh, around November, uh, it was probably six, seven months ago or so, we rented an office right down the street from where we live, probably half mile as bad from our house. You find that better than working out of the home? Yeah, I think we're more productive. I always find a lot of creative uh, avoid- avoidance at home. or yeah, I just end up cleaning the house. There's just always so much stuff to do around the house. <laughs> it's easy to get distracted. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I stay more focused at the office, definitely. Yeah, I'm really I'm really lucky because I um when I moved to Puerto Rico, I was in the house and I didn't really have a like a dedicated office for like the first year. So it was really tough. And then I um I built a little office out out in the backyard, like by the pool, a little it's like a gazebo office. So I, I feel like I got the best of everything. I'm like, I'm at home. So I'm I, cause I like being home and close to the kids and the family, but I'm removed and I'm removed enough to have like a little space. <laughs> right. So anyway, yeah, our house is a little, still a little small. It's around 1400 square feet, 13, 1400. And, uh, it's just, I had my office set up in the, in my bedroom. I had a little corner desk, uh, a nice standing desk. The ones that go up and down, but I yeah. had it stuck in the corner of my bedroom. And uh, I just found myself getting distracted a lot. And totally. Once we once we started making some money and, and got a little bit of money saved up, we this office popped up and uh, wasn't a bad deal. So we decided to rent it out. Yeah. By the way, we're getting ready to um, air the the interview video we did. I'm really excited for that. Cool. I'll I'll let you know when we uh, go live with that. Awesome. But I really enjoyed talking to you and your wife. You guys are doing amazing. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate that. Pulling it up right now. I'm using awesome. the screen. Let's see. It's 1,900 square feet. I would say. 
would say on, on, a, on a rehab, it was, well, it doesn't have the base. Definitely going to need a roof for sure. Okay. Um, I would say in the 50 to 60 range on the rehab. Okay. Okay. That's lighter than I thought. Okay. Okay. I normally do $30 a square feet. Yeah. And it seems, it seems to be pretty good for the area. Um, it, it but that's mostly cosmetic. So if you start getting into getting into roof, windows, uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, then that's going to go up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I penciled seventy five, but okay. Again, you, you're you're probably uh, your numbers are probably way more accurate than mine. But well, I t I try to I try to go on the higher side usually just because unforeseen yeah. and you know like and I'm not I haven't I haven't physically seen it. Gotcha. Myself. Yeah, no, it's definitely smart to, to leave leave some room for, for things that pop up that you're not you know, accounting for. But if you end up spending less than great, it's a bonus, you know. Yeah, but that would be amazing if if the market is penciling, you know, like other flippers are looking at it as a as a fifty, sixty K rehab. Cause you know they'll pay a yeah, little they'll pay a little more. I guess it just depends how far you go with it. You know, I, I think I think with the roof, definitely probably closer to the 60. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would say, you know, 60 is probably a good number on it. Like the one in Casco we did was mostly cosmetic. We refinished the the existing cabinets. We had them, you know, sanded down, painted, did new hardware on them. Um, and it was a similar size house to this. And we did uh, granite countertops, new sink, new lighting fixtures. We did paint throughout, flooring throughout, mostly all cosmetic stuff. Uh -huh. And, you know, we did that whole thing for like 25 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's one, the one we're doing in Detroit right now is uh, where we did have to do a roof, windows, um, paint throughout. Uh, the person we, we got it from, they, they already did the bathroom, so we're leaving that as is. They did a pretty good job with it. We're not doing too much in the kitchen, mostly just refinishing the hardwood floors, painting the whole house inside in and out, uh, painted the, the garage, painted all the exterior, did a roof, did windows. And that, that we did for 45. Yeah. Good. All right. What, uh, what are you, what are you putting down for the ARV? Uh, the ARV for the one on El Rey and Chesterfield, uh, let's see. What I usually do for, for the ARV is I take prop stream. I'll take three to four, sources usually zillow realtor redfin prop screen i add them all up and then if i if i have four sources i add them all up divided by four just come up with an average yeah i like to do that that's smart and that you know for the most for the most part that's what we uh we do to come up with our arp let's see Zillow's got it at 217. PropStream's got the estimated value at 255 and the average sale price at 247. Okay. Let's see. Redfin says. We'll just use these three. We'll use Redfin. So Redfin's at 217. Zillow is at 217 as well. I got to get you to check out Prop Wire. Yeah, absolutely. I was just talking to Jessica about that, um, about signing up. It's a no brainer. I mean, it's it's free. Why wouldn't we? Yeah, I'd love your feedback on it and play around with it, you know? Yeah, definitely. It, I remember uh, I'm pulling it up too. It was a little tough to comp because there's a lot of newer homes over there. Brick, yeah, brick and newer. So I had to exclude some of the. I think I put a year built filter in. Yeah, let's say. Let's see what. Let's see what my house is coming up as. Man, every time I, when, I don't know if this happens to you, but I will not get any phone calls. But the second I get a <laughs> phone call. Everybody decides to call me. <laughs> yeah, so true. But just just says it's your birthday too. But it's not it's not friends and family. They're like leads coming in. I think um, they're not numbers I have stored in my phone. 
that's okay. I'll call him right back. I'm not complaining, but it's just yeah, never, <laughs> never, never fails. Um, let's see. Use my house as a as a comparison because my brick, I have a basement. So, I mean, they're not good comparisons, but I just want to see how much more mine would be than this. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, the ARV on my house, I think, would be around like 320 to 320 to 350. So, I think this house being vinyl siding, no basement, um, you know, I think it's safe to stay like the, it's like 230, 230 to 250. Okay. Yeah, I was I was really hoping for like 250. Um, yeah. oops. and it's a big lot too so that's definitely gonna yeah it's almost an about, acre yeah it's about an acre so that definitely helps us for sure yeah it's a it's big lot find an acre. It, it's hard to find uh good sized lots in that neighborhood and it's and it's a a pretty uh good location things don't tend to stay on the market very long in, in that area um it is on a dirt road that might hurt it a little bit mm. um of course, the basement's gonna hurt, no basement's gonna hurt a little bit. Being vinyl siding's gonna hurt it a little bit, um, but I still think I still am pretty confident that if, if it's a nice rehab, it, it would go quick. I really do think it would go quick for. Um, I, I think you could get two fifty out of it if it if did a nice job on it. So, what do you think you could move it for with a ca- with one of your cash buyers? Uh, like if we JV'd on it. I think uh, oh. probably around a hundred, or around a hundred, hundred and ten. Okay. Let me do these numbers again. Two fifty. Because you are you are you following seventy percent out there with some of your buyers, or how are you? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm doing right now. So I'm doing 250. 250, 70 percent. Yeah. Times. Put you at 175. Point seven. Yep. Yeah. Minus sixty thousand. We'll go for the rehab. Minus sixty puts us around 115. Yep. Yeah. And then whatever. So say we wanted to make twenty on it. You know, I think we could. You know, so if somebody would come in. Um. Yeah, we got we got some room in there. If you got us anywhere near there, we we we'd do it. Yeah, um, for sure. Minus. Yeah, I don't. I think finding somebody to you know pay somewhere between one hundred and one hundred twenty range. I, I think I'd probably find somebody with over hundred. Um, I'd have to get them in there, but I'm definitely thinking that. You know, 100 to 120, we could we could find a cash buyer. Okay. How much time do you need to? Uh, do you want to? Do you got some buyers that are pretty cool that would you could kind of do a pre-sale with? Yes. You absolutely. know, like tell them it's it's 99 percent. Yeah, for sure. I have one guy in mind. Uh, there, there's a couple guys that I'm, that I'm built some good relationships with that. Uh, you know, I, I can eat, I even send them on my appointments sometimes before. I even okay, they're up. they're dudes you trust. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, that's all. I just want to make sure we don't create any kind of yeah, they, they definitely backdoor issue they or guess. anything like that. It, it it it's sort of too late because they're you know the door's closed on it, but it's still you know. Yeah, I hear you. Well, yeah, let's do it. One main cash buyer. I, I a lot of times. He even tells me, just send me on your appointments. He, you know, I've been working with him for since the beginning, since we started in uh, early 2020. Yeah. And he, you know, I, a lot of times I just send him, he looks at it before I do, tells me what he'll pay for it. And then I just work backwards from there. Yeah. I mean, we got it, we got it quite a bit under that. So we'll, we'll have a good, there'll be a good spread for both of us. Awesome. Let's do it. Yeah. You want me to start showing them? Yeah. 
Yeah, take take it, but keep it keep it um, keep it quiet till we know for sure. Like I've got it in writing, but like don't do anything public. Okay. You know what I mean? Like don't post something anywhere. Yeah, I hear you. But if you've got a handful of guys that you want to work work it on already, let's let's get them committed. Let's get someone committed. Yeah, I have I have two guys that I would have no worries at all with you know sending their you know meeting over there to show them before. Okay. I won't post it on. I won't post it or nothing. I'll just give them a call directly and just meet them over there. Perfect. Okay, let's do it. Let me know what you find out. Will do, man. Should Pre I just uh, should I just call this number back, or do I? This is my text? number. You can say this number, but uh, just work with Truman if you could let him know. He's he's kind of the lead on this deal. Awesome. I'll get right on it. And then, um, yeah, if you've got an interest, then we'll do a JV on it. And I can't remember what we said on the closing date. Do you remember, Truman? Was it like 30 days? I can't remember. I can't remember. Whatever it is. It's it's the, oh, by the way, um, what I'm doing on this one, since it's a bank property and you can't do an assignment, is we're, we set up an LLC to take title. Okay. And then we, have you ever done this? And then we'll, we could sell the LLC. I have not, but I'm definitely very interested. Oh, in you're going to love this. Awesome. What a birthday gift, man. You're going to love this because what you do is you create an, you, you create a, a separate LLC, a brand new LLC. That LLC is on the contract as the buyer, right? So right now I'm the member of that LLC, but I have a, I have a contract that basically sells the membership rights of the LLC to our buyer. So then we make the buyer, the new member of that LLC. And then he would come to closing basically with two checks, one to buy it and one for us. And then it's one, it's one closing. So there's no, we don't have to double close it or it's a work. It's basically a workaround to a no assignment clause. Yeah, but if awesome. but if that's an issue because some buyers they don't quite fall, understand that if it's an issue then we could double close it too. But we just won't be able to. This guy is a, that I have in mind is is a, is a vet. He's been doing it for. Yeah, I think he's pretty. He's probably familiar with that. He's probably done it himself. Okay, it's really easy when you kind of grasp the concept. It's not complicated at all. Gotcha. But if it, I'm just telling you this because we won't be able to do a true assignment. Okay. I know Eric Stark, he had mentioned to me back in the recession, 08, 07, 08, 09, he, he did a lot of bank owned properties. Yeah. And there were no assignment clauses. And he said he had all these LLCs. Like that was me. LLCs. I did. I've done this exact thing hundreds, maybe thousands of times. Okay. Yeah. That's probably exactly what Eric was Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's exactly what he's talking about. Because Back in that time, I mean, we were doing we were doing hundreds, and they were they were all bank properties, and you couldn't assign any of them. Gotcha. So it was this was the the ultimate workaround to it. Perfect. Yeah, I'm excited, man. Thank you for reaching out. This is awesome. Yeah, I'm excited too. Happy birthday! Let's Thanks make lot, let's make some money on your birthday. Yeah. I'm all right. Out. Okay, just get back to Truman when you uh, if you have any questions or you have any any more information on it. We will do. Thank you again. Yeah, talk to you soon. All right, bye. Dude, Dude are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, baby. That's like way more than we were thinking. Yeah, that's up to forty five. At the what are you saying? If he gets it's to one fifteen, twenty five to forty five. Be curious to see if if uh, his buyers look at it the same as him. Yeah. You know, on the rehab and stuff, but you know, that's awesome. Yeah. Guys, was that cool or what? So that's a, that's a student of mine, Brian. He's a fairly new wholesaler, but he's really working hard doing a lot of deals in that exact neighborhood. So in something like that, you know, we could Truman, we could, we could maybe find our own buyer. Yeah. Um, but, not JV it. and not JV it. Right. And maybe we consider that. I don't know. We, we, you know, our goal is to try to make as much as we can on the deal. But sometimes if you got somebody that's super connected, another wholesaler, and he's got a couple of guys and they're hungry and they come in, sometimes you can make more money even splitting your assignment fee with, with the other wholesaler yeah. than you could on your own, 
right? Especially if you're not super familiar with the area where yeah. he is. Yeah. 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 So, so that's really cool. So JV and like that can be very powerful. It's an awesome strategy. I highly recommend it, especially when you're newer in the business. So like, let's say that I wasn't here and I didn't know Michigan or anything and you just found this deal. Mm-hmm. Tying into a, a guy like him or a couple different wholesalers that are super active could be all you need to do. Yeah. Because what you can do is in the beginning, you can just focus on finding deals. Know that you got a couple of really good JV partners. You feed them your deals. Mm-hmm. Let them go find the buyers and close yeah. them. Like, right? you know, that way you're not worrying about the cash buyer and you can just focus on deals. That's good. Yeah. 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 And then eventually, I mean, eventually you want to build your own buyer list yeah. and, you know, but, but, uh, so you never want to use JV as a crutch. A lot of people use it as a crutch, mm-hmm. meaning they're just being lazy to develop their own buyer list and they just oh, keep okay. taking their deals yeah. to the go-to guys, you know? Yeah. Um, they don't mind. They love it because you're feeding them deals and they got buyers. But, uh, but you know, if you're in this for the long haul, then eventually you want to create and build your own list of awesome buyers. Okay. So because it takes effort, like it's work to mm-hmm. cultivate and build that list. Just like, just like Brian's doing with agents, you kind of have to do the same thing with buyers. Not to that extent, but you want to stay in front of them. You want to know who they are. Every day there's new buyers coming into the market. So you, you're constantly doing lead gen to build your list, you know, all of that. So guys, feedback, questions, Let's, we're, we're live here. We want you to participate. So Tyler, help us, uh, help us manage this. Is, you're, you're pulling them up, right, Tyler? Yep. Here's one from Marcus again. Do you still comp through Zillow, Redfin, et cetera, or do you rely upon PropWire? PropWire, what's your opinion on its accuracy in comparison to PropStream? So I don't know PropStream too well because I don't use that service. But uh, Tyler, if you give me my screen right now. Um, so when you put it into, when you go to the comps tab up here at the top, on when you're on an, in, on an individual property, you know, it's got your map feature here. You can you can zoom out. It'll give you a radius or you can draw. So like in this case, I wouldn't cross the freeway. And we're like right in here somewhere in the middle. So maybe what I would do is if I draw, I would click the draw feature and then I'm going to turn it off. You know, you can you click your points. So maybe I go down like this, you know, and then hit enter. So I can create my own um, custom area that I want to comp like I just did. And then what I like about what we did in prop stream, prop stream in prop wire, that's different than like red fin is we made sure we had a basement and garage filter where I can say on here, no basement, you know, so I can say no basement and then I can say, yes, I want a garage. I can do some year build. So some of these filters are normal. Um, I can do a range on my square feet close to my property. And then what's cool here is, so these are the comps kind of in this area. Let's say that I really like this 260 comp. Here's how I go fast at this. And I was showing Jonathan this the other day. I'm not even going to look at any of these. I'm just going to pick the, the ones I lo- the, like, the higher priced ones. I'm not going to pick this low one at 150. I know I'm going to be somewhere in the over 200 range ARV. So if I just pick these two comps, it, does a, it automatically does my average for me. And it's basically averaging between whatever I click on. So let's say I click on this lower one at 205. You'll see it'll readjust my number. Um, well, it's grabbing the price per square foot, so, which is probably why I brought it up. But see, like if I keep, keep clicking on these, it's going to readjust it. So you just kind of got to go through and see what kind of comps you want to look at. Maybe I, maybe I open up this range a little bit more because it's, it's kind of, there's more space out here. So like, let's say I clear this. Maybe I want to go all the way up to the top here and go all the way down to here, something like that. That might have given me a few more. Let's see. What? Let me make sure I got filters in your single family. Yeah, I might want to move this up to not not a year, go six months or so. So not a ton of comps over here. It's 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 a little spread out, but. But yeah, so just play around with it and see kind of what you like. Um, yeah, that's we part of the comment, Jerry, that uh, I think it was Jay was saying that some of the comps he's found on PropWire have inaccurate bedrooms, baths, or maybe they claim to be sold or inaccurate. So he's had to kind of 
cross-reference some of the comps. That yeah, we're, we're working on how we can get the the information with on market a little more real time. I've noticed that too, where there's some delays in some of the updating, some of the listings and stuff. You know, so yeah, that I've I've seen that too a little bit. So we'll work on that. But like, if I take out the if I take out, so look at what happens if I put in basement. So that gives me a bazillion comps. So I may check some of those and make sure that they, you know, in fact, don't have a basement. But these two here, this is like my favorite one right here. Oh, it doesn't give me much on that, like picture wise and stuff. But this got, this sold for, I think it said 250. Oops. Oh. I accidentally closed down the screen. But yeah, the comp tool is pretty cool. And, and so check that out, play around with that. And again, what you do is you check these boxes and then it will update your value. And then you can even download that into a CSV. So sometimes you, you might want to send that to somebody and it'll have a list of the comps. What's the typical percentages for what you just did there on a JV? How much is he making? This is referring to your phone call. Yeah, yeah. So typically a JV is uh, you 50-50. You don't have to 50-50. Um, like you, I could say to him, hey, get me, get me, uh, I could say, give me 115 and I'll give you 10. Then he gets 10 and then we get the other, whatever, 25 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can do that on a JV. Um, but typically the way the industry does it is you split it. So whatever, whatever your, you know, gross wholesale fee is, you split that with your JV partner. When you first start it, it'll ask you light average or heavy, and it's got an algorithm for that. So I've got a video that explains, you know, how we break down the numbers, but it's basically a certain cost per square footage range. And then as the square foot range changes, the, the, um, the rehab number changes. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you can get that, by the way, you can get this for free. You don't have to be part of Flipster if you want just the calculator. It's mydealanalyzer.com and it will kind of do this for you. But like in this case here, this one you're looking at, Jonathan, it's got that 308 on the ARV. This came up with a 62.5. So I'm going to guess that that was, do you remember, was that a light average or heavy? Probably I think average. It was average. Yeah, because it's pretty big square footage. So this one calculated 62.5 on the, on an average rehab for that square footage and then it runs your other numbers and it kind of tells you where to be. So yeah, this one's pretty far under where they're asking. And then you can put your wholesale fee in here, whatever you want to make on the wholesale. I like to put uh, 15,000 as just your, your base, like minimum. You can go for more, but you, you really don't want to be going, making offers on stuff for less than a $15,000 wholesale fee. So then you would need to get this. If these numbers were all accurate, you would need to buy this for 138 with an ARV of 308. And the ARV was the the way I got that was from CropWire. Okay, so you comped it on there. I didn't use the comps on DLAN on um, Flipster. I just went straight to yeah. CropWire and comped it and then put it there. And I, I did I did a really quick job, so I wasn't looking at them all. At all the, yeah, all my comps. Yeah. So remember, guys, when you're when you're making offers, you wanna you wanna go fast, right? So it's the same idea Brian was sharing earlier. You can't be on the phone for hours and, you, you know, Brian was on that call like two minutes. What was it, Brian? It was like two minutes or yeah, something. Like 155 or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're boom, on to the next one. So I, I, I have the same idea around comping. Yeah. So like one thing that I built recently that I've shared on YouTube, guys, is this super fast offer calculator. And this, I don't have this yet into a software. Um, we'll, we'll put it into a software here soon. But basically the way this works is I'll just get the, the averages. So you could grab an average also off of, off of uh, prop wire. Um, it doesn't tell you the average. Check right on that. Yeah, if you plug these numbers in, it'll tell you the average right here. And then what I like to do is I like to come up with an exit formula. Just an exit meaning this is where a buyer would want to be. And then I've got my built-in wholesale fees I want to make. And then it just instantly will spit out your, um, your max buy. So, for example, I guess we could probably plug one in here. Let's, let's take uh, Truman's deal of 250000 
I'm not going to put these all in here, but let's just say that they averaged 250. Let's make all three of these 250. And then um, let's see here. Um, and then we want to exit this for a lot lower. So let's put this exit. Let's see here. This has it at a 70 exit, which would be a 175 buy. Um, yeah, so this, 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 they'd probably want to exit a lot lower. Um, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I was right where I was at. Yeah. So we're, we're actually a little higher than that or no, we're not going to get it for, wait a minute. Let me think here what we're doing here. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is the as is value. That's why. So our as is value is not 250. That's why I'm. I gotta, I'm shifting my brain here from ARV. So we're not doing ARV, we're doing as is. So these wouldn't be 250. These would be, you know, more like probably one, I don't know, 150 probably. Let me, let me just make this up right now so you can just kind of see the logic behind this. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit more where we're at right now. So assuming right now that the, the as is value of that property, Truman's deal is 150,000, not ARV, the current condition of that property, then an investor would want to be all in at 70% of that value. So that's 105. And then if we wanted to make a 25K wholesale, we would need to buy it at 80. So we're kind of around those numbers. We're at 75. And Brian said that, uh, Brian Cash Buyer, Brian said that, you know, 100 to 115 is what he was kind of thinking yeah. we could get on that. So, so anyway, this is just like a spit out an offer number. Jerry, I'll have one out. question. Yeah. I'll have one question about the deal that you're working. Uh, you were saying that you could double close that one since it's an REO. Isn't that subject to the REO? Cause we worked one where you couldn't resell the home up until it had to be 90 days after you close. Like we so what you're, what you're talking about there is an FHA buyer. Okay. So FHA has an anti-flipping rule where if you buy a property and then you sell it, resell it to an FHA buyer, there's a 90 day waiting period, seasoning period that you have to follow before okay. you can, before you can do that with an FHA buyer. Okay. So let's say we take, let's say we take Truman's deal. Let's say that I bought that. Like, let's say I bought it. Mm -hmm. And then we put the rehab in and let's say we knocked out the rehab in like a month and I'm up for sale right now. I'm up for sale and an FHA, FHA buyer wants it for 250. Well, I've only owned the property 30 days. I got to wait another 60 days before I can even contract with the FHA buyer and then close another 45 days after that. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, maybe it was the FHA, but I knew like the 90 was there. Yeah. But is, um, selling the LLC a way around the FHA or would that still be true or like? No, because the FHA buyer can't buy the LLC. They have to okay. buy in their personal name. Yeah. Okay. Cause yeah, the, loan's, yeah the loan's in their name, not, a, not an LLC. Yeah. So the LLC trick only works with cash buyers. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. But it's a cool trick. In fact, uh, Tyler put up their LLC flipper kit guys. I've got all the paperwork for doing that LLC hack strategy. I'll give it to you for free. And uh, I've got some YouTube videos on, on it as well. But if you go to, I think it's llcflipperkit.com, you can get the whole packet of how to do that strategy for free. So I, I paid an attorney, you know, umpteen thousands of dollars to create all the documents for it and uh, give it to you guys for free. So definitely do that. You're, you're, where this comes in helpful is if you're, the, the main reason is if there's a no assignment clause. So that would be an REO, a short sale, auction properties, what else? Uh, some probates. Usually if attorneys are involved, then then they, they like to put no assignment clauses in contracts. Uh, some states, Brian, you and I talked about this, I think. You, some states have, um, where in the agent state approved contract, there's a clause where the seller has to agree to an assignment. Yeah, that is true. Our title company has that for all of them. So um, the one that we use, because my cash buyer uses there, 
Um, but so what our what we word around that is when we say we need them to sign off, we can assign it. We usually say for tax purposes, we yeah. we have multiple LLCs. You know, we're nothing's changing. We're just moving it around within our own business. They say, okay, you're set there. Um, yeah, but, yeah, but, but they could, but they could choose not to agree. Yes, and the one so the one that you actually double closed for us it was ironic because um, we actually couldn't even assign it because so that agent. They were in the process of, I think they were traveling, they had a funeral to go to, and they just switched brokerages. They had a lot of stuff. They said, you know what? Everything's too confusing. Do you mind if we just don't sign off on that for this one? And I was like, sure. So we, either way, we had to double close, uh, like even if we didn't want to disclose our fees. So yeah, they can say no, and you might be forced to double close. Um, but yeah, so... So I thought you guys did that one to not disclose your big wholesale fee. We did it for both reasons. That was our first reason. And then after we like figured out that we're going to level close, we were then like, the, I went through in the midst of planning. He actually said like, no. So we're like, okay, like now okay. we have no option. So yeah. it was two reasons there, but it was mainly because of, yeah, <laughs> the, the wholesale. Yeah, part. guys, I did a video and broke down that deal. It, it came out, I think yesterday. It's about how to double close with hundred percent funding. I actually funded uh, it. In the video, I talk about Jared Hetler's deal, but it was Jared and Brian, they JV'd on that deal. Yep. And um, and so I stepped in, funded the deal for them on the double close. It was really cool. It went like clockwork, Brian. I mean, we yep. wired the money in for closing one for 140000 wired the money in. Yep. And then your closing two was like right after for yep. 175 Cash buyer comes in with 175 and then title wired me back the, the original you know, my original, so my money was a wire in a wire out that day on that yeah. deal. It was really fast. They're great. Yeah. I love using them. So is the, is the video up on YouTube yet? Yeah. Yesterday. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Love it. Yeah. Watch it. You'll like it. Cool. So, cool. so they netted, um, they, you guys paid about $2,500 right around there in closing fees yeah. on combined. Cause you paid some fees when you bought it and you paid some fees when you sold it. Yep. But uh, so your thirty five thousand gross wholesale ended up being like thirty two five or something yeah. like that, you yeah. know. But still, right. like, good one, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So guys, if you wanna if you wanna use my funding on your if you do double closings, I do I'll do the first one for free. Uh, but to learn more about that program, you can go to usejerryscash.com. Maybe Tyler, you could put that in the thing usejerryscash.com. You can register for training and learn all about like how that program works, but. I created that program because I, th I think I said this in the video, I think uh, assignments are going to start to get more and more difficult and double closings are going to be more and more common in, yeah. in wholesale. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you want to be ready. You want to be ready for it. Okay. Um, Jerry, yeah. I just want to tell you this. Okay. So Brian got back to me and he said, um, his numbers were off. But <laughs> no, I'm confident I could find a buyer for 130 to 150. What? That's off. Wait saying. a minute. He's off the other way. I know. That's what I'm saying. Come uh, on. What? So, uh, <laughs> you guys can get break this one. What are you talking about? I don't understand. Maybe he knows some contractors who might want to live in there after. That's always some case of people. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. You never know. No, tell him go for it. Okay. Yeah. Tell him go for it. We're all in. Let's do it. Okay. So. Uh, Tyler, before we jump into something new, anything else, guys? Leave a leave a leave a comment if you've got something about what we've done so far. A question about anything? We're jumping around into a lot of different things, all wholesale, but but uh, let us know. When a real estate agent is writing up your contract and you request for them to add and or signs, what's your go to response to diffuse their concerns? Great question, Brian. How would you answer that? Uh, so if a real estate agent is writing up the contract and they say add and or assigns, so it's usually what we say. So we do it with the case that, uh, we can't and or assign. And then if we decide that we want to, we write up an addendum. It's always, we say an addendum saying, Hey, um, after we've ratified with our contract, um, by the way, that way they know we're legit. Cause you don't want to come up and say, we're assigning it before everything's set. Um, we add and say, Hey, can you write up an addendum? Um, just approved by the seller. We're moving it around within our own business. We're just going to, uh, bring it to another one of our LLCs. I don't say the word assign either way. Um, yeah. so it's usually an addendum. And in that case that me and Jerry were talking about where the seller can say no, if they just don't trust you, whatever it, it can pop up. 
then we can double close it in RNA. So I don't ask them before. I don't, I mean, I make sure I don't ask that before you write the contract because you want to show you're legit. You want to get under contract. Then I ask for the addendum after they know. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here's, a, here's another thought on this. Um, so if your contract does not have a no assignment clause or nowhere in the contract, does the seller need to agree? Then you actually don't need and or assigns because all contracts are assignable unless stated otherwise. So again, if the contract does not say anything in there that you cannot assign it, it means you can assign it. So then I typically won't put and or assigns because I know that that's red flagging somebody, the agent that I'm, that I'm a wholesaler or it could red flag somebody. So you might not even need to add that in there. Some people, a lot of people add it just every single time just to be safe. And that's fine. I get it. Uh, another thing that I might say is Brian said this a minute ago. I might say, look, I have multiple entities. We do lots of different things. I work with other partners and investors as well. I really don't know right now today at the time of signing the contract how I want to take title in 30 days. I need the flexibility to change what entity we're going to buy this property in. Now, all I said there was I need to change who the buyer is at some point between now and closing. And I've never once had an agent say, oh, well, I don't want you to do that. You know, like they don't care. You just got to explain to them why you're doing that. But no, they may say to me, they may say to you, are you a wholesaler? Because when they see and or signs, they may say, oh, this is a wholesaler. And so really the question isn't, it isn't like, why do you have and or signs? That's easy. It's what do you say when they say, are you a wholesaler? So my, my response when someone says, are you a wholesaler? Is I say, do you mean, do we sometimes assign contracts? Yes, we do that all the time, actually. Sometimes we buy, sometimes we resell. Sometimes we'll do a light rehab, an average rehab, or a heavy rehab. Uh, sometimes we'll buy and hold. Sometimes we pass deals off to some of our partners and, and they take the deal to the finish line. I don't really know right now what we're going to do with this deal. I just know that if we get it at this price and we sign a contract, that we'll, we'll get to the finish line with it. And you'll get paid your commission. The seller will get everything we agreed on. You know, so that's how I diffuse that. Are you a wholesaler? Do they ask that a lot? Because it seems like it doesn't really matter. I don't get that a lot. I really don't get that do it. I think it was one deal we did that somebody asked that. And yeah. the yeah. trick is never over explain. If you over explain, oh. that could also kind of screw you too. So if they yeah. say wholesale, I say no, but I have wholesale. Like we, we are flipping this, but in the case that life happens and things go south because it's real estate, we do give it away sometimes as an exit. So I say like, we might use it as an exit, but I want to make sure that like, no, we are closing this. We have zero intentions of wholesaling. So just this, is a, this is another reason why I think it's important to double close some transactions because when you double close, you can actually, actually legitimately say to sellers and agents that you buy property because you did like Brian, you bought that house. You and Jared bought that house. Yep. Exactly. Now you were on title for five minutes, but you still bought it. <laughs> right. So uh, don't say, you know, sometimes we buy them if you don't ever buy and you only do assignments, you won't be able to say that. But, you know, so just be be open and be honest. But you want to be able to say, I think you want to be able to say you're an investor and you have multiple strategies. Hmm. And so Truman had a deal where when he first started calling, where he, he explained it. First call. Oh, your first call. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us how it happened. So, um, I called and I offered and she was like, okay. And she, it was going good. And, um, Jerry was in the grand Canyon, like at the bottom of the grand Canyon. <laughs> so I didn't have a lot of guidance and this was my first call and my dad was also gone. So it was just me. And, um, so I was trying to text Jerry, but he didn't have any service. And <laughs> so, uh, at the time I didn't know this, but in Michigan, contracts are already reassignable. Yeah, and they're assignable. Yeah. Yes, and so uh, it was nearing the end, and I was like, "Hey, is this contract reassignable?" And she was like, "What? What? Why would you need to do that?" So then I answered the exact same thing that you said. I was like, "Oh, I'm an investor. I might pass it off to one of my partners. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I just need the flexibility to reassign it if needed." Yeah. And she she did not understand, and she. 
like asked me three more times. I kind of gave the same response, <laughs> and then it kind of just went cold and it was done from there. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really exactly know what I was doing yet, so like, yeah, and I didn't have a lot of guidance. But I, I think I learned the most from that. You know, like, did she ask you, "Are you a wholesaler?" Did she no. say that? Oh, okay, she, said, she didn't say that. Okay, she asked me about three times. Why would you need to resign it before oh, closing? Okay. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. So it totally fell apart, and I was kind of sad about it for a long time. <laughs> I thought it was a deal. Okay. And it would have been a deal at that price, correct? Which is that the Rochester one? No, um, not that one. Limerick in Oakland. Oh, yeah. The green one. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a deal. And then she went dark, right? Was that what yeah. happened? She wouldn't talk to you anymore? And I was like, yeah, I totally shouldn't have asked that. Yeah. Okay. So the problem was is you 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 didn't even need to ask that. No, I, I didn't know because I was looking on the contract yeah. to see. It, it apparently doesn't even need to. So. No, you brought up a, an objection that wasn't an objection. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of, gotcha. you know. But hey, that's how you learn. Yeah. Yep. That's how you I learn. I learned the most from that. So yeah, that's good. That's awesome. And I didn't do it this time so far. So you know, on this one, on the on the back <laughs> one, yeah. That's, so that's good. I learned. Yeah, that's it. It's all about learning. Yeah. Good, Tyler. What else we got? I think that's it for now. We can uh, let's move on. We had some people say we want to see some cold calls. Okay, so Truman and Johnny, let's pull up some leads that you've got. Right, I got like eight. You got eight. Awesome. Let's pull up. And Truman, we'll, let's go one at a time. So we'll, we'll pull one up. We'll run some quick numbers. I haven't texted any of the agents, though. So Okay, that's I fine. Just, I just got their information put down. But you ran the deal through Deal Analyzer? Yeah. Okay. And comped it in. Okay, great. Okay, so let's go to your workflow. Property workflow, yeah. Okay. We're on the side, Johnny, so you're in the screen here. Okay, here we go. So, so in, in Pontiac, Michigan, Cherokee is in the historic district. So this is like the high end part of that town. It's like the highest price point area. Okay, so so this is it. You ran an analyzer. I can't remember how far. I think this one might have been really far under. Oh, this one we were looking at a minute ago. Okay, so sixty two. Yeah, one. So way off here, right? Because what are they? What are they listed at? Do you remember? It's like two something. Two. Seven, okay, and you got the agent on this one. Yeah, you got their info. For right here. And what's the ask price on this? The ask price? Yeah, the list the list price. It's two fifty seven, right? Oh no, our buy price? No, what the agent has it listed for. Yeah, it's two fifty seven. Okay. Think. Is that the correct square footage? Four bedroom, two bath. They just lowered the price twelve thousand. Drastically reduced. Must see this beautifully renovated. Okay, so when it says beautifully renovated, this may not be um but you know what I think we do? Let's do what uh, let's do what Brian does. I think you guys start doing that. I've been having so I've been having Truman and Johnny just call Brian, just call on listings, you know. But if you if you're putting in more than an hour a day, you're going to quickly burn through anything that's distressed on market, and that's where just calling on everything like Brian does is going to be really powerful. Yeah, yeah. You guys get that? You guys see that? Yeah, I see that. Now. So. Let's just call on it anyway. And and Johnny, run through with me real quick what, what you're going to say on this call. I'm just going to talk to him about this property mm-hmm. and ask him if he has any other ones. And also just kind of establish that relationship. Yeah, so you know that this isn't going to be, although that roof looks kind of. I remember looking through this and I thought it looked. Let's look through it real quick. Showing us a bazillion of the outside. It, the the write up said, oh, "Here we go." Okay, so that's not really a. I wouldn't call this a rehab. No, this is not really. I mean, it's clean. I would still treat this like you want to make an offer, but what you do on something like this, where you're a hundred grand under, is okay. So they tiled up there. I'm just gonna go kind of no, but these wood floors need redone. No, this is not a rehab. Okay. At least not based on these pictures. So there's a couple things you there's a couple things you could do. You could just go in here and just make contact, tell the agent that you're like Brian does. You tell the agent, hey, I'm an investor. Brian likes to lead in with, do you think the seller would be interested in creative? It's a it's just an icebreaker. It's just something that it's just a good question to ask. 
if they say yes, great. Maybe it goes down and maybe it turns into something. Nine out of 10 times, they're probably going to say no, right, Brian? And then what you want to do is you want to say, hey, I'm looking for a property. I'm an investor. I'm cash. Do you have anything right now I can look at? Yeah. I would say before I go, like, okay, cool. No worries. Before I go, that way it just seems like you were, yeah. you really were just in and out and that's all you cared about. And um, it just seems more genuine as opposed to like, you just asked that yeah. question just to interview them. Then they might yeah. be like, huh, but yeah. One thing that you might want to add, Brian, maybe you do this, but one thing that I would add would be, can you save my number and call me the next time you get a, mm. a property that might be good for a cash buyer? Mm, I, yeah, yeah, that's actually a great point. Actually, they won't. They won't. They'll forget. <laughs> it. They hang up, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter anyway. But my, my work. I would say twenty percent of agents are actually good agents, and they actually are networking and they're building a list, and they want you as a cash buyer. Yeah, it's amazing to me. No offense if you're an agent on the phone right now, but it's amazing to me how bad agents are. If agents ran their agent business, like we run our wholesale business, they would completely crush it. Yeah. They just don't they're treat terrible. it like a business. They're terrible to follow up. They're ter- yeah. I mean, I'm generalizing, but in my experience, they're not really working leads like we do. You know, if I were an agent, I would want to know every single cash buyer in the market and I would be calling them every time I get deals. Mm-hmm. Right. And they will once you keep staying in front of them, but it's, it's like you're working at it, not them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Johnny, let's do this call. Okay. So what I'm saying is, I'm not making an offer. I'm just. You could. Where's our? What's our offer? It's like 157. Something. Yeah. So what I would say is, I would just say, because uh, what was their ask price again? 257. 257. Yeah. So you're you're 100 under. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. 153. So I would still do it. Here's how I would do it. You've seen me do this. I would say I kind of lessen the blow and I'd say, Hey, I'm an investor. I see this property. looks like it needs a little bit of work. It's pretty clean. I'm interested and I can pay all cash, but man, I got to be quite a bit under where you're at. Do you think the seller would entertain a really low cash offer? And then I kind of made it, I kind of said low cash offer, but I didn't, I didn't just come right out and say, Oh, my offer is 150. And because that's going to come across pretty offensive, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you can say the same thing without saying the same thing, which is, hey, I need to be way under. And if he's like, well, how far under? Man, I need to be like a hundred grand below where you're listed right now. I know that's way low. I know they're not going to take that. Like you kind of agree that it's crazy, so mm-hmm. that they're not a, they're not mad at you. You know what I mean? Yep. Okay. So let's see, is this agent on here? Otherwise I'll have to go grab it. Yeah, I, th- I got it right Oh, now. you got it? Okay, do it on, do it on my okay, phone. Wait, is it'll... this, which one was this? Cherokee. Cherokee, okay, her name's Mary. Mary? Yeah. Okay, good. Let's go. I just got it right here. Yeah, but I want to do it on mine. Oh, because it'll, it'll recognize that. the number, yeah. Okay, it's two, four, it. Just type it in. Okay, guys, cross your fingers on Johnny here. Okay, wish me luck. Hello, this is Hello. Um, yeah, I'm Johnny. I'm I'm calling you about your listing on Cherokee Road? Yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm interested in this property, but um, yeah, what can you tell me about this property just to, just right off the bat? If there's anything that's in the, that's not inside the information that you have on the websites? No. Okay. No, so. no, but you know what? Um, the owner totally did a lot of renovations. The only thing that to me really needs to be done is the floors being refinished. Yep. You know, if you rent or something to refinish and restain them, yeah. uh, it would be about it. Yeah, what about the roof? Because um, from the photos, it looks like the roof might be a bit old. Now, he says the roof was, uh, he's thinking around 2017, but I know on the garage, the, the roof, the, 
the roof on the garage is brand new, but okay. he thinks it's 2017 for the rest of the roof. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, but. Okay, Jenny, can I call you back? I have an appointment. I'll call you back and meet like about an hour and a half, okay? Yeah. That works. And then I can answer anything great. Thank you so very yeah, much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. I'll talk to you Take soon. Care. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, good job. Awesome. All right, feedback. Brian, what's your feedback for him? Uh, one thing I would say is stutter less, but I think that just comes with practice. You were asking, you were asking the right questions there. Um, but also... I think that it might even just be a little bit waste of time asking spe maybe specifically about the roof, maybe just what needs work, nothing. Great. Like, cause if we, if our intention it was to just get the agent's information, then that it doesn't matter. It, it seriously doesn't matter at all. Um, but like, it's, it's fine. It's completely good to ask that one question, then go into it. Like, okay, cool, whatever. It, and it depends on your intention. Like if you actually did want to make that offer, then you're on the right track. But if it was just the agent, it's just ask if it needs work, see what she says, and whatever she says, say, okay, cool. I thought so too. And then get on with the next question. Because um, my conversation probably could have been over in that one minute and a half, but now she's going to call you back later. So mm -hmm. that does it actually does make the difference at the end of the day. But overall, you're asking the right stuff, going down the right track. It's just that would those are my small critiques there. Yeah, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think Johnny, like if you when she answered the phone, you could say, "Hey, I uh, I see this property that's listed. Um, you know, I'm an investor, and I'm possibly interested in this. If this is if you want to try to go after an offer, you know, I'm an investor. We're looking to buy a property for cash right now. I saw this one. You could say, "Well, could you tell me about it?" But then she might dialogue for an hour. Right? That's happened before. <laughs> um, if you're trying to just like. Hey, I got a, I know I don't have a really good shot at this one. I just want to make a connection there. It could be as simple as, Hey, I'm an investor. I'm interested in this property. My offer is going to be way lower than where you're at right now. Would the seller entertain that? Would they possibly open, be open to creative financing? Oh yeah. You know, where, where, and just kind of like where this is where, this is who I am. This is where I'm at. What, what do you think? And then, but the whole point isn't finding out about the roof, right? The whole point is, making a connection, getting her to see if she's got anything else that might be available that you can look at. And can you call her or can she call you when she gets a distressed property? Right. Yeah. Like that's, that's the objective on these overpriced ones. Okay. Good. It's good. Yeah. Good job, Johnny. That takes guys leave a comment and say, Johnny, way to go. You're a flipping genius. It's you guys know when you start doing this, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky. It's nerve wracking. Yeah. 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 But Johnny, it's just about reps, right, Brian? You just put the reps. In. I remember being way worse than that when I initially started my calls. I was Me too. The of calls where I, I knew I already just messed up and I pretend there was times I was like, what? I pretend I couldn't even hear him. And I just hung up. I was like, it went so <laughs> far south. I was like, what? I can't hear you. Like, can you hear me? Like, I was like, no, I just wrecked that relationship. Like, I don't even want him remembering me. So if I just go down farther. So you did awesome. You crushed it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And Johnny's had some, some time on the phones, but yeah, it's just, it's just getting comfortable, getting yeah. comfortable the more you do it. Okay, guys. So think about again, you know, getting to an offer as fast as you can. And it's a ballpark number. We're not going to go spend time, you know, running through all the rehab items. We're not going to spend a ton of time comping. We want to get there really, really fast, get a high level number so that we can just put an offer in front of this agent because we know we're, we know we're significantly under. So let's say for example, this happens, we're at 121.5. It's listed at 180 something. What was it? 185. If it, let's say they counter back and the agent says, you know what? Uh, I put your offer in front of the seller and um, they countered your 121.5 at 130. Then we're like, okay, 130, maybe that's a deal. I don't know if that's a deal. Now let's comp it. Now let's rehab. Let's now let's send our guy out to the property because we're close. We're closer. It's it's more realistic now to spend some more time on it. I don't ever spending time doing due diligence, just like spending time talking to an agent, just like spending time doing anything isn't right or wrong. It's all about the timing. 
which is why Brian, you know, he's literally on the phone for two minutes with these agents because he knows that the house he's calling on is not a deal, but he wants to make a connection and see if they have something and build another agent in his, in his referral system, in his CRM, right? That's it. They could be a deal. Like uh, you can make offers on all of them and you're bound to get deals. It's just one is more worth it to me. You're gonna, I'm going to end up with more deals down the line if I just don't care about everything. All the MLS deals up front. But Yeah. Yeah. So it, one of the hardest things to learn when you first start in this business is how to be productive and not busy. It's the, it's the biggest thing that I see happen is wholesalers. They just spend so much time doing things that aren't really leading to, to, to the dollars. Yeah. And it took me a year and a half to learn. I like, it was like three months ago like where I really took this pivot in my business to like hard focus in on doing this and realize my income producing activity. So if you're going all in on agent outreach, like these are the tips that took me a year and a half to learn, even learning from Jared who took another two years, you know, like even if you're on the right path, there's always just things you're going to learn. So just really folk a uh, dial in on uh, busy versus productive percent mm-hmm. as you should be banging through offers and agents like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So Truman got a text back on one of these. We'll figure out which one it is. <laughs> it's either this one or this one. We haven't done this one yet. So it's either Harlson or Silvano. Hello. Hi. Hi, this is Truman. Truman, how are you and how can I help you? Uh, I'm, I'm interested on your house on Silvano. I'll talk to you about okay. it. What can you tell me about this house? I'm, I'm an investor looking to make a, a cash offer in the area. I'm just looking around, so. Okay, so uh, I'm, are you looking to use it as a rental? Uh, I, I, I'm looking for a fix and flip, possibly a rental. Okay, well, that's, that's not this one. Okay. Because I'm at the low end of the spectrum on value, and when this tenant moves out at the end of the month, I will go in and spend 15 grand, and then I'll raise the price 25 grand, and I'll make the extra money. So it is, a, it is an investor special. It's in great condition. I'll just update it a little bit and turn around and sell it. Somebody bought it, so in a dad's condition, I'm good with that. Other buy it, I'll just go in and rehab it and do what I have to How do. low can you go? Uh, how low can you go? What's the, what's the list of that? 165. Yeah, to so not pay another broker, I'd go down to 160, and that would be it. Oh, okay. But I just had lunch, lunch with a mortgage person, and uh, she tells me that her clients are making 10 and 12 offers before they even get a property and it's 30 or 40 above list. So, you know, this will sell in a jiffy when the tenant's not in there. Oh, okay. Well, I'm definitely not your buyer for this house, but I do want to let you know that I am. So what, where are you? I've got a couple other properties coming up. Somebody died. The family called me. Blah, blah. Do you have a specific area that you won't go? Let's try that. Uh, no. No. I'd like to see your properties, though, that you have. Well, when I get them, I call my investors, and they end up going just like that. So okay. I'm just trying to find out what you don't want, and uh, well, how about price? It doesn't matter. I'll take anything. I don't do the Okay. All right. Well, when I get the next one I have coming up, I will uh, add you what to the list and give you all a call. Okay. What, what city is it in? Clinton Township. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I also want to let you know okay. before I go, uh, I'm unrepresented, so I would love to have you write the offer for me. Well, that's the only way I would do it. I wouldn't call you and have someone else write the offer. Why would I do that? <laughs> okay. Great. Great. Thank you. I've been doing this for 40 years, 40 plus years. And so, you know, if I'm going to call someone and say, yeah, I've got a house for you to buy, they're going to buy it from me or they're not going to buy it. Yeah. Right? Why would point. I do it? Why would I do it any other way? True. Great. So okay, good. I'll okay. put you on the list, and let's see what happens. I'm probably a month away from the other one. I'll follow up with you in a couple weeks. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Thanks so much. I'll follow up with you. You're welcome. Perfect. All right. Have a good one. You too. Bye.
Like, great. All right. Yeah, go Truman. Woo. Awesome agent. Dude, so so that right there is the epitome of a double dip agent. I would not call you otherwise. Guys, I if you're if there's anything you took away from this call that Truman did, it was that are you freaking kidding me that agents aren't motivated by the double dip? She won't even entertain it. Mm-hmm. So this agent is actually one of those, what, the, the 20% agents that actually know what they're doing. If she ever were to get a distressed property, now this is her own property. She owns this one. If, if, this, if this agent ever were to get a distressed property, it will not even go on market. Yeah. So she's going to call her investors. Yeah. She's going to, she's going to work a list. She's going to do a pocket listing. She's going to work an agreement with a seller on a 6% commission. And then she's going to call Truman and she's going to write the offer for Truman, get the full commission and, and, and double commission it to a cash buyer, like a Truman. That's what she does. So okay. follow up. Can I add something in there too? Yes. Uh, so give Truman some feedback, Brian. Yeah. So number one thing, uh, great confidence. It's, I noticed that like, you're pretty like, you know, where the conversation is going. So good job about that. Um, which is key. One thing that this isn't something you should know, but this is what I always say is I know those agents, personality types, I've spoke to them all the time. And when they do say stuff like that, um, you, what your confidence really crush it when they say, yeah, like I wouldn't do it. I'd be like, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, like I knew that, like, the, the, the serious of your tone is something that really tones in. And what I say to make it even better is look, look, I came into that knowing that. And if you have investors and I'm at the, like, I, I totally get, if you already have a giant list of investors that you already respect, I have relationships that I respect. If you just add me to the bottom of the list, I'm cool with that. So to make it like solidify, like no, I'm here, but re- almost pushing them away is really pulling them in. When you say, hey, send to one of their investors, honestly, I have relationships I value for years. That is something that you is great. Um, so that's something I always love to add, especially with her personality type, because you need to get in front of her and that be that person. Your f- consistent follow up is going to get you there um, and should. But even then, there are some agents that really won't deviate from those people. Um, and then one other thing is instead of asking what city it's in. Um, ask an open-ended question. What's the scenario with the home? Um, does it need a lot of work or what needs work? That way she talks about it. And the key thing is I would get is like the condition, but most importantly, the timeline. You're lucky that um, she actually just randomly added at the end. It'll be ready in about a month. But otherwise, because the amount of agents, like this is a good agent, good lead. She could ghost you off the face of the planet and you don't know. It's a guessing game. Do I follow up in a week, two weeks, three weeks? Oh, I don't know. But if I know the deal's coming in a month, I know it's not. I don't want to spam her with five calls next week, but if it's kind of the unknown. So those are the kind of things, but overall, great. Like you worked at fantastic. You weren't even on there too long, but uh, you did awesome. And you're pretty confident with there. So, yeah. Yeah. Let me add some things to that too. So you didn't even need to do the double dip because it was already just a given with her. Like, yeah. You didn't even need to, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, okay. Yeah. You didn't even need to add that, but it's fine that you did. Uh, one, one thing, if you do say that is you could say it a little bit like this. You could say, Hey, by the way, any of your listings you bring to me, I'll let you write for them. I'll let you represent me. I, and she'll be like, yeah, of course I would. I said, okay, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure that you're aware that I'll let you. And and now when she's saying, hey, I only take these deals to my investors, why would I do it any other way? Now you know she's got a Rolodex of other investors. This is where Brian was going. So I might say something like this. I, when she said that, I would say, you know what? I would love to become one of your go-to investors. I'd love to be one of your one of your top investors that you that you take deals to. We close cash. We buy all over town. You know, we buy all over Oakland and Macomb County. We're looking for deals. You know, you could you could bring me your your deals, and I'll run and look at them, and I'll give you my price right away. I'm easy to work with. You know, maybe sell yourself a little bit yeah. as to why she should put you at the top of her list. You know, so that's another way you can kind of think about that. I want to be your go-to. Save my number. Put me on speed dial. When you get a distressed property, I'm your guy. I just kind of, I like to have like that kind of confidence around because now you know you got the, this, this is the agent we look for. Yeah. This exact agent is the one that we want. So we want, we want 50 of these in your market. If you had 50 Catherine's in your market or even 25 in your market, you're going to probably do, you're going to do three to five deals a month. Yeah. With 25 to 30 active agents like her. Okay. So, um, and then remember when we're wholesaling, 
we really don't care if it's a if it's a rental or a flip. Now, I like to kind of talk to people like, hey, man, I'm looking to flip it. But we already know that it's a rental. And she's kind of saying to us, hey, there's a renter in here. And she said, you know, it's priced right now for a rental. But if I don't sell it, I'm going to move the tenant out. I'm going to put a little work into it and I'm going to raise the price. So she's already an investor. She's savvy, right? She's smart. So when she says, you know, what are you going to do with it? I would probably say, you know, it looks like it could make a great rental and it looks like this could be a flip too. I don't, I'm not really sure I would entertain either idea. Why are you asking? Like why? So then, you know, redirect the question. Well, why does that matter? Oh, okay. So you might, you're trying to sell it right now as a rental, but then you'll sell it as a flip later. And you're just trying to understand where they're at with it. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think other than that, that was that was really great, Truman. Awesome so, connection. Yeah, just save her number. Follow save her something. number. Yeah, follow yeah. Up with her like in a month or like maybe like. I wouldn't wait a month. No, no I'd say a week and a half, two weeks. Now. Yeah. The, the initial first follow up is the most important because if you could have a call, you, she could forget the next week. But once you follow up once as soon as possible, I say like every agent probably within two weeks. Make sure you hit them once, and then yeah. even her, I would say she's probably a two to three week kind of time kind of agent at the end of the day but yeah because she's gonna forget about you if she has those investors and she's already done several deals with them she's not even thinking of you she's you're out yeah. of her, you're probably already out of her mind she doesn't even remember you're right so yeah, i might even with this one i might even send her a text right now and say hey Catherine, great talking to you uh yeah. just you know looking forward to that listing you're gonna get in clinton township in a month you know say my number that's also, I forgot to add that. I do that after every single agent I contact. I have a pre-written message of, it was great speaking with you blank. And I just leave the name blank and type their name. And then here's my information to save when the next opportunity comes up. I leave my name in parentheses, put investor, because that sometimes they might save investor in their contacts. And when they search investor, your name comes up. And you know what's, you know what's this cool here, guys? I hope you gather this as well. You know, Truman's brand new, right? And Jonathan too. Brian's got, he's done so many calls. It's its now second nature to him. But Truman, you really couldn't have screwed it up. Like, you, like you, there's no way to really screw this up that bad. I mean, I guess you could, but it ended the call with her saying, I'm going to call you on a pocket listing in a month on a deal I'm about, on a listing I'm going to get. Like, yeah. and you didn't know what you're doing, but it worked out. Like, it's just... <laughs> to me, when I see that happen, it just reaffirms that you don't, this isn't rocket science. You don't have to be super amazing on the phones. You don't have to have all this skill. You don't have to be a master negotiator. You don't have to really do any of that. All that's going to help, but you could literally just fumble through these things and you're going to get traction Yeah, and you're going to get a deal. Mm-hmm. Completely right? Right. Volume over, yeah, volume over anything. I bet you I would have loved to have had a recording on Brian's first deal and listen to him <laughs> probably said all the wrong things and, you know, still did a deal. So yeah, you're probably right. 100%. It's just, yeah. Like it's, it, it depends on your personality type too. Like you might attract different people based on how you speak, but there's so many different people in this business. If you just say I'm an investor or whatever, somebody's just going to, even if you don't ask any questions, somebody's eventually just going to blurb out like she did and just, just tell you straight up. I have stuff. Um, and some of the better agents too, that I found, if you guys are really looking to niche down, like the best agents to have is not even those agents that we just call, but the agents that get one to three per year, very randomly because they never do investor one. So when they get one, you're the only investor that they have. So they do deals. That is, I think where not probably 90% of my deals come from where they get one to two a year but you're that person when you get that one to two per year. Well, this, lady is great. this lady is awesome. I'm not saying that she can't give you deals, but yeah, but you're going to be competing with her go-to investors. Yeah, yeah that is true. You know, so what's going to happen with her is she's going to call, you know, 10, 10 buyers and now it's going to be whoever's willing to pay the most. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's still better than fighting over public listings oh, yeah. to be on her, to be on her list, but you're still competing. Right. Whereas what Brian's saying is, the onesie twosie agents that just happen to stumble upon a distressed property, those are the gold mines because they don't, they don't, they're not really working cash buyers. You're the one that proactively created their relationship. You know what I mean? That's that's what you're going for. And if you consistently follow up, you will get in front of them. like I've had plenty of agents where they have like 10, 20 buyers, but they say, look, honestly, 
you kept calling me and you called me right at the right day, wherever it's where it's ready, you get first dibs. There was one deal um, that happened last week. Uh, an agent actually referred me over to this wholesaler because I closed the deal with her. And he called me. He said, I said, do you have any deals? Um, he said, yeah, I just sent this one out today to his VIP buyers. It was like the perfect burr. It was all like a completely rented, ready home. You didn't have to touch it. And it was worth 210 as is. He was selling at like 125. Like it was, it was a crazy deal. And I follow up the exact time and he said, you know what, man? Uh, I came in with him with an offer immediately. He said, I trust you and you follow up the right time and I get good values. Says, I'm gonna we're gonna sign a contract right now and I'm just gonna tell all my VIP buyers cancel. So like you can get in front of these guys if you just consistently follow up. Like it was just perfect time where he's like, you know what? Just because I trust you, I'm a, I'm gonna give you the deal. And you just showed up. So it's it's it really does work. Just stay consistent, even if you you're awful at it. It's 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 gonna work. People are gonna give you deals. Promise. Yep. Awesome. All right. Do you want to get, do you want to let Truman have a shot, John, or you got another one? Yeah, sure. What the heck, dude? Get one of those people to call, call us back. I don't know who, who says they didn't call me. Right so okay. They yeah, texted like four people. Yeah. Hopefully one of them responds and we can get it back on the phone. All right, Truman, what's the address? Hold up. 82. <laughs> so eight. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. 82 on a 165 list. And then let's just take a quick little look-see. All right, it's pretty clean. Rehab, that's a 37. Yeah, what would you even do to this thing? I mean, it's got, looks like they put in some new yeah, fake floors. Cool. Kitchen's super old, but they put in some tile. This one, I This one, I would definitely... I mean, they're not look. It's not a fire sale type of thing, right? So just, I would definitely just try to get the agents. Yeah, just try to make a connection. Okay, I'll we'll call them. Isn't it? No, it's trial, yeah. right? Even, even after yeah, that. but I, like, I I fish. I yeah, yeah, I fish. Just fish with it. Yeah. See if see if they bite the hook. Hi, Sam. Yes, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? This is Truman. Sorry I missed your call a couple times. Yeah, how are you? Truman, as you said, is your name? Yeah, Truman. Yeah, it's kind of weird, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got a presidential name. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, you, you inquired about uh, Rose, my listing on Rose. Yeah. I'm an investor in the area, just looking to pick up a deal. Okay. What would be uh, something you would offer for this? What would you offer for this home? So I would I would go in there and I, I'm a, a flipper, so I would totally renovate the whole thing. And I'm cash, so that means I'd have to be a, enough of a discount that I could, you know, make some money on the back end. Um, I would have to be like low 80s. Yeah, low 80s. I would have bought it myself. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just wanted to call and just talk to you about it. If you look at what he paid for it, he won't sell it for that, no. Um, but uh, thanks for asking. I'll, I'll keep you in mind if something else comes up. Yeah, I would love, uh, if something else comes up, I'd love to have you at the office for me. I'm, unre okay. I'm unrepresented. Okay. So I'll text you my contact information. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. How'd that go? Nice and short. Yeah, quick. Yep. What the freaking heck? Just... Guys, leave a comment. What's your feedback for Truman? I thought that Brian, any, well. any feedback, Brian? Brian usually has good feedback. Uh, I thought that went pretty well. I feel like you could have asked if you had anything else coming up at this time. Wait, yeah. did you? I'm not sure if you... Maybe I missed it. Um, I was looking at the deal I was about to pull up, but uh, you could ask if you have anything in the works right now. Um, and my go-to question is how many times per year do you usually get something that's in suits an investor? So I actually take it a step even further um, because I know when I've asked that question, people just say, oh, a few. I don't, I don't know what that means. So I say, is it one a year, two a year, less than that, more than that? Where, where do you stand? That way I give them options and they say one, two, more, less. So that's usually my go-to. 
But those are my two questions. Cause now you called him, but you don't really know how often to follow up and you haven't, you haven't really vetted him um, to know when to follow up, but you did great. He probably saved your info. He knows you're an investor, um, yeah. but you, he knows you, but you don't know him. I think yeah. at the end of that call, um, that would be my, probably my feedback there. Okay. Yeah. And maybe, maybe on that one, not even gone for the kill, right? Cause you're, you're in the low eighties are at 164. It's mm -hmm. pretty clean. So you said to him, like I would go in and redo everything, but you know, it you probably really wouldn't redo everything. You know what I mean? Cause look at it. It's not, it's not like yeah. a gut. Yeah. You know? It's not the worst. It's not the worst house you've ever seen. Um, you know, this, you could probably lipstick and resell if you got it for the right price kind of, kind of idea. Yeah. So, but, you know, nothing, nothing wrong there. It's just now it's great because you can just get little tiny nuggets of things that you could do maybe a little differently, just things to think about. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, I, I might've said, man, I need to be quite a bit lower than where you're at. Would the seller entertain like a really low offer? Do you think? And then what you do is you kind of say 80, but without saying 80. Yeah. And then, and then it doesn't, because my worry would be, here's my worry. He hangs up the phone and goes, I'll never sell that guy a deal. He's buying, he's buying so cheap. He was, he's not even worth my time. Call him back. Yep. Yeah. Because you give him an 80 number. Yeah. I kind of get it to him kind of quick. Too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if he's like, oh, okay, I get it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm priced it to find a retail buyer. He's cash. He needs to be way under. Yeah, that makes sense. Any cash buyer is going to want a deal. And so then maybe he's a little more open to like re reaching back out to you. But again, there's no right or wrong here. It's not like giving them your number was bad or the wrong thing or killed anything. It, it didn't burn the relationship. He still said he would call you. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's all good. It's just, just a little, little tweaks is all we're doing now. Completely agree. Oh, I get on the phone. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome to get on the phone with someone. Yeah. Um, I, have, yeah, I have an agent here if you want me to call. She gave me okay. a deal this morning. Um, she gave me a whole breakdown of like a paragraph of information. I just haven't looked at it. So let me try calling her and get the get the gist. Now, this is off market. So she said it's coming on next week um, as a short <laughs> sale. So when you, when you get her on speaker, um, maybe try to keep her close to your microphone or whatever on your computer. Okay. I think I might ease my camera. So I'll be close camera here. So we can hear it. Perfect. Hey, Kelly, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Awesome. Doing pretty good. Very busy, but hey, that's always a good thing. <laughs> That's right. It's a good time here to be busy. Yep, exactly. So I, I had another one. I actually was looking at flipping it myself, but um, I just don't. This project has got beyond the scope of what I feel like dealing with. Yep. Okay. Why so? Is it just a lot of work? I don't want to know. It's not actually all that. It's, I'm not a flipper by trade. Yep. And so I really only flip properties for my sellers, like without purchasing it, it's just doing it for them. Mm -hmm. I really, I really only do that if it's, you know, 92% cosmetic, um, because it's a lot of risk for me to take to spend my own money on somebody else's house. Yes, yeah, I hear you. 100%. So it's just got beyond that scope and, um, you know, for a flip, it's a great flip. It just doesn't fit the model of how I do flips. Yep. Totally understand it. Okay. Hopefully it fits us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With, uh, so kind of give me the breakdown. Um, I just kind of reading your text here, just a busy day. So it needs new HVAC, needs crawl. Uh, kind of give the summary of what the home actually needs. Yeah. So in the crawl, um, I think there was a pipe that was leaking there while it was vacant, like okay. a, from a sink. Mm -hmm. um, so it's actually like from the sink drain. It's, I don't think it's a cracked pipe. I know you'll do your due diligence, but yep. um so there was moisture uh, at some point there was previously installed like a dehumidifier and a sump pump. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually got paperwork on that from the agent who represented the buyers at that transaction. Okay. Uh, she shared it all with me. Uh, and that was only a, a couple of years ago, maybe like 2021. Um, so 
the homeowners just are stupid and they didn't go down there and check the systems. They didn't check the sump pump every six months like they're supposed to. So the little well they dug, you know, filled with sand and now the sump pump is seized up. So it's just through negligence. It's not an overly wet, you know, yeah. Gotcha. Space. It's just, you know, yep. Okay. Paper so it bill. seems like it needs, <laughs> <laughs> seems like it needs cosmetic roof crawl, just kind of, have a medium so habit. The roof, the roof doesn't need to be replaced. It's not that old. It's got some damaged shingles. Okay. Um, so you'll do, you'll just need to do some touch up on the roof. Um, there's definitely some sophic work and fascia boards where it's just shitty install of <laughs> you know wrap on the the um, soffits and fascia boards. Yeah. A um, little bit of um, siding repair, you know, some pieces with holes and stuff that just needs to be tapped back in. Um, but in the crawl space, I think, you know, a bunch of the duct work is damaged. Some of it's disconnected. So you're going to probably be putting in some fresh duct work. Um, the okay. HVAC system needs to be replaced. Uh, there is a moisture barrier there that could probably just be stretched, you know, put back in place. Okay. Um, cool. Depends if, if you feel like replacing it. And then um, inside, you know, cosmetically, it's pretty dang close. So you might want to just freshen up the floors, but they were refinished in 2021. Okay. Um, and it's hardwood. So, you know, if you give them a real good steam clean, they might come right back. Um you know, in some lighter colors as far as paint, if you feel like painting it. Yeah. Um, the, it. the style home, you probably, did you already look it up online? Uh, no, I, I have it pulled up here, but I don't see anything. I just, I literally have the address right in front of me. That's it. <laughs> All right. So if you would like pull it up on Zilla, the pictures from the last um, turnover will be on. Okay. So I only I see that's... one picture of the outside. I don't see the old pictures. Really? Yeah. Is it a 2 one 1596 square feet? Yep. So it's a 2 one two, The original floor plan is a one-story home, but they've got very narrow stairs up to the attic, and the, the upstairs is finished. Uh, it's got like an open room right at the top of the stairs, and then two very small bedrooms. Okay. Um, but they listed it as a 2 one because those bedrooms upstairs, the ceiling height is not seven foot. Oh, that's gotcha. probably why they did it. You know, it's a it's a typical, um, you know, finished attic. Yeah. Um, so, is it really fifteen sixty one square feet? I mean, technically, it has <laughs> that much square foot. Yeah. But um, with your comps, you're either going to want to comp it out for something less, like a little bit smaller, which is what I was doing. Okay. Um, and that's why I said conservatively, like around two ten. You could get as high as two thirty for it. Okay. Cool. Um, no, why the sellers looking to sell this one at all? If they just bought it so recently, they said they bought it in 2021. Why are they looking to sell? Yeah, oh. it's a it's a young military couple. Um, the husband is a douchebag. He got dishonorably discharged. He's a terrible human being. Um, the wife was deployed for 18 months and came back, and he had absolutely trashed the house. Gotcha. Just trashed. Okay. Cool. Um, so we got all that cleaned up and ready to go, but you know, what is the price that they're asking at this point? I know you said it's a short sale. So it's a short sale. We're going to have to run it through the bank. I'm probably going to list it so that the bank can see a paper trail. Yeah. Um, I probably have to list it at like 175, but it, it's probably going to sell like a 150 is my guess. Okay. So it's, probably worth 150 based on what you're saying it could sell there it's worth low 200s and it needs all that work yeah it probably needs HVAC 20 uh, I would say on the high end about 25,000 okay like really you know your labor should be shorter cheaper than what my labor is because yeah. you've got a crew so on a very high end twenty five thousand, you'll probably bring it in under 20 with your own people okay now do you have any pictures of the home at this time i don't have any that i took recently no but um yeah I, if i was you i'd just send your eyes out send somebody out yeah because you gave me the lock box for it so okay yeah. Cool. Yeah, I can't give you an offer just because I haven't seen the place and it sounds like the layout's weird yeah, and just, everything's up. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just giving you a heads up. Love it. Um, cool. Uh, you know, if, if, if I do this three or four times and you're always giving me offers that are like 
not viable, then I'll probably stop sending them to you. But um, I'm going to send a few your way and see if we find one that works for you. Love it. Um, Perfect. Sounds then, good. Uh, her plans to be on the market next week. Okay. Now, um, obviously, it's a short sale and it's a bank. They have their own processes. Um, but would they be open to something pre-listing if we can align? Or how would that work? I'm not sure if that's even on, on the table or not, but figure it out. I don't think the numbers are going to work for you unless you can figure out something for me because her payoff is just under 160. It's a VA loan. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I've got to, I've got to make my commissions. And okay. what I'm expecting on this is that I'll get both sides as full 6%. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I'm working my network. I start, I'm starting with you first. Love it. Um, you know, so okay. what is that? Three hundred, seven, eight? I don't know, nine thousand or something is what I need to come out of it. With. Yeah, somewhere around there. Okay, I'll run numbers and I'll keep you posted. Maybe we'll take a look at there. Um, but just planning ahead because. I know how things go in this business. Um, in case numbers aren't there, is doing something like a subject to an option where we can take over um, their mortgage. I know you said that they still have an outstanding balance of that one sixty-ish or so. Yeah, um, she is open to that. However, I've already got a signed listing agreement, so if she does that, she's going to have to pay me out of pocket, and she doesn't have it. Okay. So obviously it's completely dependent on tons of factors here. Um, but typically if we do a subject to, and if there's money, we would cover your commission. Um, but like I said, it's subject to the seeing the house, the scenario, there's a whole ton of factors, but um, ideally that is what we'd like to do. So. All right. Well, if that works out and I get paid, that's great. <laughs> and especially if I get to relist it for you. Um, her payoff, I think is 158. Okay. Cool. Her VA loan, something right around there. Okay. Do you know um, her interest rate at all that she has in it or her monthly it's payments? Low. It's like, yeah, it's like 2.75 okay. right around there. Do you know her uh, monthly payments for the home? Nine something, 930. $930. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's with taxes and insurance. So her insurance is too high. Um, I got it quoted like $200 less okay. at least. So awesome. that can come down. Love it. All right. I will run some numbers. I'll look at things, see where we stand, and I will keep you posted. Awesome. All right, thanks Thank so you much. so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. boy, Brian. Probably not a deal. I feel like the numbers, I know that area, it's is just no way as a flip. Um, but pivot the conversation. I tried to see if subject to might yeah. be an option, but yeah. Yeah, uh, let's let's plug some numbers in. Uh, Tyler, put put me on the screen or put my screen up. I didn't catch all of them. Maybe you wrote them down, Brian. Um, there we go. So subject to you guys see that right here? That's there's a couple tabs here. One's create one seller finance, one subject to. Did she say one fifty seven on the sub two balance? Uh, one fifty eight. Yeah. Okay, one fifty eight. Um, she said. Now, did you ask if they if they were behind on payments or is she current? Mm, I did not. I missed that okay. one. Yes, yeah. so they. I think they're they might be current, um, but that would be something right here. The reinstatement. Yeah, it says they. Uh, what I'm looking at based off Zillow, it said that they bought the home in 2021 for 158. So they could be behind. I don't. I don't really know. Um, All right. But, let's. Let's do, um, she wants the full 6%. So would she say that would be eight or nine? Yeah, that's what she said. If it was like 150. That'd be nine, five on a 158. So let's just put, let's just put 9,500 as her commission. Closing fees are going to be a couple grand, maybe not quite 2,000. Let's just put, or 2,500, let's just put 2,000. Because there's going to be some legal on that or a transaction coordinator I always use. Mm -hmm. uh, We'll come back to the assignment fee. Let's skip that for now. Doesn't look like they care about cash to the seller because they're trying to short sale it, which would mean they would get nothing anyway. Yeah, that probably right. makes sense. Okay, let's keep in mind, I, I try to get cash to a seller when I do creative, but if it's a sh if they're marketing and trying to do a short sale, what that means, if you guys don't know, it means that they're trying to get the bank to agree to sell it for less than what's owed on the loan. Now, all that seller's trying to do is avoid a foreclosure and avoid wrecking their credit. Yeah. Uh, so they're not expecting to walk away from closing with cash. Yeah. So let's not offer it because they're not expecting it anyway. 
if it's a normal uh, non short sale type of thing, I try to put like five grand in here, even if, if I can, now if the numbers don't pencil, they don't pencil, but I always try to get a few dollars in the seller's pocket for one primary reason. If they're getting five grand at closing, they're going to be, they're going to be engaged in getting this deal to closing. They're going to sign things. They're going to let us talk to their lender. They're going to do all the things we need and they're going to cooperate because they're going to get something. What I found is with sellers, when they're getting nothing, they tend to like just drag their feet. They don't, they're not really motivated. I don't know. It's just harder to deal with them. Yep. Okay. We're going to put zero on the improvements because we're just going to try to wholesale this. Uh, and really, I'm going to put zero right here on a carry back. It so, seems like based on what I was using, I just use Zillow rental manager to run rental comps. That's what I had. Okay. It What's says, her so it's the it's looking at around so everything around there is they're like three twos, but they're looking at the square footage mainly, and it's saying that rent is uh two thousand dollars per month. Okay. So let's put over here, let's put two thousand on our on our gross rental income. With so access. management what's that? No, I was about to say that seems like a good spread for a subject too. If she's nine thirty a month, there's at least like seems like yeah. something you manage. So here's a Here's a trick I like to do, guys. You get your gross rent. You're going to have a management fee of 10%. Then you're going to have maintenance, insurance, property taxes, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't really worry too much about that. I just want to make sure that this number is coming in around, around 70%. So about a 30% in operational cost is fairly consistent for a single family rental. Um, now, I, I updated the number there, but what I would do is, is this a three bedroom or what was it? She said it was a two one, except that okay. there was um, bedrooms upstairs. I didn't count as bedrooms because they weren't seven feet tall. So I didn't get whether it was three or four, um, which is why the rental comps might be off because it's going off the, the square footage. But I don't really know what's considered bed bath count. Yeah, that would be. We'll definitely want to verify that because two thousand bucks for a two bedroom doesn't sound right. Yeah, they, yeah, that's what I'm that saying. Sounds, sounds pretty high. But then let me just adjust one of these numbers over here to bring this in closer to uh, 70%. Okay, there we go. So now I'm at, and let's drop this down. Let's make this, I don't know, 1500. I, I don't think you'll get two grand for a two. Yeah, I know the area. It's it's not a high-end area. It's kind of one of those homes where it's like comps aren't there, but sometimes like it's, it's okay. It's not the best. Okay. So that means this thing's creating a 10 grand NOI net operating income without debt. So then what it does here is it gives us, uh, okay, so now we're adding in debt service. So this thing doesn't really cash flow at, at this, at 1500, right? Because what it's doing is it's saying, oh, let's fix our loan. So they got a loan balance of 158. And then you asked them the interest rate. Did she say or no? 2.7%, which is a lot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's the power of creative picking stuff up. Low well, interest like that. Yeah, we don't know what's. I'll just leave this here. So I'm, what I'm doing right now, guys, is I'm fixing the the loan, the sub two loan, to kind of match. But she said their payment was like nine something, but that was probably including it was insurance, an insurance, right? It was nine thirty, including everything, all in that piti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's going to offset some of ours. So I normally just put in here the, the PI. So let's just leave it at that. Let's assume that we're getting our taxes and insurance covered Yeah. in our rent numbers. So then that means the, the, just the principal and interest payments, probably 640. That sounds about right. Yeah. I think she said two or $300 per month. thing was the insurance yeah. that you're still yeah. not Yep. And then I've got a box in here if we do a second. And the reason why I have that is because you you may, like, let's say I wanted to keep this and I wanted to borrow the entry fee of 16000 Yeah, I can add in a private loan into my numbers. But for now, we're just looking at yeah. not doing that. Okay. So now it makes sense. Yeah. Now we're looking pretty good. So look look here, guys. 250 in a, assuming it gets 1500 Now, if that's only $800, we are going to be in trouble, right? So we'll want to definitely want to verify the rents over there, but assuming it's 1500 is what the average rents will get. 
And assuming it's kind of rent ready, it's not a whole bunch of work needs done that that might throw numbers off a little. Right. But assuming it's fairly work. Yeah. So there's some assumptions here, but let's just assume it's clean. It's rent ready. It gets $1,500 a month for argument's sake. Uh, this is what the loan takeover would look like. Assuming that there's no reinstatement fee, you got to pay commissions, closing fees. And based on, uh, so what I do here is I take for every hundred dollars in cash flow, you can get two thousand dollars in assignment. Okay, so so two hundred and fifty four would get us basically a five thousand dollar assignment. Yeah, seems like it. So it's a little tight. Like I would like to see that a little higher, so you got some room to play with in case you're off on something. But just like that, in, in literally, you know, five minutes, we got we got kind of a number here on how to understand this deal. Mm-hmm. Yep. Pretty good. Hopefully, might be something. Yeah, because think about it. If let's say you assign this for five grand, that means a, a local investor is going to be all into this deal with a 2.7 interest rate for 16 grand. They're in the deal. You guys see that? Because the 16 grand is going to cover the commissions, closing fees, and your wholesale fee. And then they just picked up a 2.7 interest rate. I think just because of that interest rate, you could probably you could probably get this deal done. Someone's going to love that interest rate. Yeah, that could be true. Sweet. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll work probably get work on some getting someone inside because she already gave me the lockbox. Um, and she said it's coming on next week. So we have like a week to, to figure it out and score it away. So. Maybe, maybe something. Awesome. Uh, guys, I'll give you this calculator, this tool here for free. Uh, what's the what's the link, Tyler? I don't remember. Creativefinancingcalculator.com, something like that. Is that what it is? I was going to say, I don't remember this one either. Let me look at my gazillion free things and find it real quick. Uh, yes, you do. Oh, my gosh. Creative financing, creativefinancingcalculator.com, Tyler. Okay, guys, was that helpful? Was that kind of cool? Did you guys hear? We didn't really talk about your call, Brian, but I loved how you just, uh, one thing I noticed that you did really well, hope you guys caught this, is I, I talk to Jonathan about this all the time. She goes on and on on a rant. And then what you did really good is you just would paraphrase what you thought you understood and ask her a question. So you would say, so you said like, okay, so is what you're saying that the rehab is around this? Okay, so is what you're saying that um, what they owe on this loan is 158. Uh, yeah. oh, is what you're saying then I can I you're going to list this in a week, right? So it's just, I mean, don't make it super obvious where they just said it and then you repeat the question, but you want to make sure that you're following along and you're understanding what they're telling you. Uh, it's a great way to just rephrase what they're saying and make sure you understand what's going on. If you're a good listener, that that helps. It just shows, like reiterating what they said, that you're not just asking your questions to just get the deal done. It's like you're having a conversation, not just she spoke. So what about the price? What about this? Just like ignoring everything that she said. Yeah. Well, what happens, especially in the beginning, is you got a million things going through your mind right now, and then you stop listening because you're thinking about what you want to say. Yeah. And then you totally miss valuable information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that comes with experience, just like anything, mm-hmm. like guaranteed at the beginning, I completely would have ignored everything she said, just said, so what about this? Just yeah, yeah. Went over it. It's yeah, it happens, but appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Good guys. What, uh, what are you guys learning? What questions do you have? What big takeaways do you have? I think this one was more for, uh, Brian as he did his call. Uh, he, he knew exactly the rental. So I think this question from Marcus is more um, for Brian. Yeah. I personally in the past have used, uh, you type in Zillow rental manager yeah. and then you type in your address and it comes up with right at the top of your rent estimate and also a whole list of uh, comparable rent. So it says the bed, bath, square footage or whatever. Um, and it even shows like a little picture. So it's, it's very simple. Zillow rental manager, type in the address and it usually pops up. Um, might be a little less, might be a little more depending on market rent. You might have to dig into it a little bit, but that's, I've never failed me. It's what they say is usually right around there. Unless there's a scenario like this where the bed bath might be off. Um, but 
So Brian, we didn't we didn't uh, talk about this, but what's your what's your next move on that property? Because you said, okay, I'm going to look into some things and get back to you. So what are you doing next? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So I have a couple of different options. Um, I actually, I, you know, how I did a creative financing internship. Um, they buy a lot of creative financing stuff. I could actually connect you guys if you want, Jerry. I can actually text you about that after. Um, I'll probably shoot it over to them and let me know their thoughts. Um, and if not, I also know Dispo people. Like I said, my some of my first like four deals, it wasn't I had my buyers. They know every single person in the business in like three different states. Um, and if they don't know a guy, they know a guy who knows a guy who might be interested in something. So I might shoot them the numbers and see what they might be looking to do. Um, yeah, that's probably where I'm going to execute. And yeah, yeah. so. So let me kind of share, guys, what I think Brian's doing here. And this is a really good move if you're just unsure. Like, this one's kind of weird. You don't have any pictures. You know, it's it's a short sale. Those are weird. Short sales can sit around for months before the banks approve them. Mm. So, like, and something like that, but Brian, Brian didn't want to commit to an offer. This is something that you can, if you've got some cash buyers or, like you said, you've got some great contacts, send it over to them. If you've got a cash buyer that's a player in your market, you could call them up and be like, hey, I got this lead. I'm working it. It's not going to get listed till next week. Yeah. Can you take a look at this? Can you tell me what you think? Can you put some eyes on it? Give yeah. me your number so I know kind of what to do with this seller or this agent and, and start to pull in feedback from your local experts. Like no one's going to know the market better than people doing deals in that market. Yeah. The and it's a whole thing. Trailer- a lot of times as a wholesaler, you think you got to get to all the numbers, you got to know all the answers, and you don't. You don't have to know very many answers at all, yeah. but know how to find the answers. Know how to find the people that can give you good feedback. Yeah. The number one thing that I have learned with creative is that every single investor strategy is different completely. Yeah. It's not just a flip. Like There's so many people like my internship, um, they were heavy on like zero money down unless it's like an agent commission yeah. because- they might sell it on a rent to own. Some people might hold it as a rental. Some people, they might be a contract. Like literally it's who sees it as a deal and at what numbers it's, it is completely up in the air. Um, like I know yeah, also I have, Jerry. I have, guy. Yeah. I had a, I had a student we who had a deal that was creative and the, and the uh, seller, the only reason why the seller was willing to sell it on creative was because of a, a of a tax benefit he would have gotten. Well, he was trying to avoid a tax liability. If he sold it outright, he would owe a bunch of tax. So he did not want to sell it outright. He wanted to sell it on terms. So it was the weirdest thing because like you just said here, in that particular situation, creative made sense for no other reason than he wanted to save on his taxes. <laughs> So you yeah. just don't know what, like, why people do what they do with creative. Yeah. There's and there's people who like don't even care about cash flow up front. They might wait a few years and then receive their cash. Like it's, it's so Honestly, subjective. That deal you have at the two point seven, I could see somebody negative cash flowing that and still want it. Yeah, yeah, I I could see that too. Uh, Jared actually knows a guy um, who does a lot with creative stuff. I might shoot it over to him. He knows a lot of people. Um, so yeah, the, for the creative stuff at this point, like I really want to, I'm big on own a lot of stuff with creative at some point down the line, but right now it's so up in the air. It's just, this is the year of building income for me, but the creative stuff, it's kind of pass it out to other people and just see if anything. Yeah, still- I agree. At your, at your age, Brian, cause you're, you're so young. I would just focus on income producing right now yeah. and then you'll get to a place where you're ready for that. Yeah, exactly. But uh, real quickly here, guys, Tyler, put my put my calculator back up my screen here. I want to show one thing I didn't point out real quick. Yeah, there you go. So if you guys look over here, this this investment analysis box here. So the way that you look at depreciation when you own an asset is you have to back out the land value. And then with single family residential, you then divide out your acquisition, your investment by 27 and a half years. So if you look at this deal here, assuming that they they gave the land value of this property of one fifty eight a forty thousand dollar land value, then this property is creating. If you were to buy this property and own this house as an investment property, you would be writing off forty nine hundred dollars a year in a in a non cash write off on your taxes. 
So that means if you're paying taxes, take the cash flow out for a second. This property is worth almost five grand a year, a year for the next 27 and a half years. So where I'm going with this is someone locking in at a 2.7 interest rate earning, let's call it five grand a year. That's five, that's five grand that you're not paying in taxes, which is the same as making five grand is another way to look at that. So if you add in the write-off on top of the annual cash flow, assuming these numbers are right, this thing's actually making eight grand a year, right? Because it's making three grand in, in net income and then it's making another five grand in tax savings. So this is where you got to, you know, your buyers that are interested in, in holding assets, there are buyers that buy negative cash flow properties because the, the write-offs are so big that they're looking at the tax savings as income, not the cash flow as income. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's important to understand that. It's really important to kind of see that. Mm-hmm. Another cool thing here, though, is also the, um, where's our cash on cash? Uh, all right here, 18%. So that's the other thing that's cool about this. So if I invest 16 grand to buy into this deal, that means my $16,000 at this cash flow of 254 a month, my cash investment is making me an 18% return on my money. That's pretty cool, right? So you can see how there's these other attractive things about this deal. It's not just about the $254 a month cash flow. There's other things that make this a valuable asset to a buyer that you could possibly wholesale for a profit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Which, which is why guys, I'm such a big believer in learning, learning enough about creative and asking enough of the right questions to be able to fill out this you know, calculator and see if you can put a deal together and, and wholesale creative. Sure. Awesome. Oh. What else you got for us, Tyler? <laughs> really great to see the process from conversation through evaluation. Thank you. Awesome. That's great, Carlin. Alex Cruz, I said, anyone in the Virginia market, my main market is the Virginia market. So feel free to reach out to me on Instagram, Delta underscore solutions underscore RE. Would love to connect. Yeah, maybe Tyler, you could put that up there. That's come up a bunch of times. We could either add that in the chat or maybe run that across the thing. Um, Brian Social. And thank you, Brian, for being willing to reach out to people that uh, yeah. might have a question or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's what it's about helping people in this business. Everyone helped me to get to where, where I am. So I love it. That's all the questions. I think we, we kind of answered everything so far. Okay. So we're, we're about 15 minutes left until we uh, said we're out of here. Okay. Let's think through the process here, guys. So if we could kind of recap, you know, let me recap for a minute and then, you know, we'll see if anything else comes up here to wrap, wrap up here. But, you know, think about the process here. We've got to generate some leads. Those leads can be direct to seller off market, or they can be on market where you're going to agents generating leads and filtering through those leads is the key to this business. Because if you can create that volume and you can contact enough people consistently over and over again, then the cream rises to the top. So the people that the the 5% of the market that is motivated to sell at a discount, you're going to cipher through and find them. They're going to kind of surface. So it's all about surfacing the, the deals out of all of this data that's out there, right? On market or off market. So you really want to be thinking about your business from a perspective of how do I consistently get in front of leads? How do I get through enough leads to where I'm having quality conversations now? How do I have enough quality conversations every single day to where the stars align and I've got a, a seller that wants to sell at a discount an agent who's on board with double dipping, or if it's, you know, if it's on market, how do I do that process of leads, filtering, calls, quality conversations, somebody raises their hand, right? And then we're going to make sure we've got a good deal. If you're uncertain about the numbers, 
do the best you can to get to a discounted price, shop that deal, you know, send it to a couple local cash buyers, have them look at it, have them give you their numbers, use that feedback if you need to, to readjust your numbers, get the contract. You want to get it executed in writing, get that contract, open escrow with a, with a wholesaler friendly title company. If it's on market, the agents are going to want to use their title company. Make sure you like that title company. Before I ever agree to use an agent's title company, uh, I'll call and, and ask them, hey, do you guys work with wholesalers? Do you do assignments or double closings? How familiar are you with that? How comfortable are you? And if they're like, we don't know what an assignment is, what is that? Then I do not want to close with that title company. Uh, so then I'll go back to the agent and say, look, I really don't want to use your title company. I've got a title company that's really good. And I'll push real hard to use my title company. Um once you have the contract, once you open escrow, then you're going to want to find your cash buyer. And again, guys, there's lots of strategies to find your cash buyer, the, the Facebook investor groups. I like the neighborhood flipper technique where you look for other rehabbers in the same neighborhood where you're doing deals. Call those agents, see if their flipper wants to come look at your deal. That's That works really, really well. It's a great way to, to find buyers quickly. Um, you know, Then you're going to get the assignment signed buy that cash buyer, get that over to title. So they have that now, get a non-refundable earnest money from your cash buyer. And then you're going to go to closing and you're going to walk away out of there with that check. So, I mean, that's kind of big picture, but mostly what we fo focused on today was like, okay, how do I get a lead? How do I pull it up? How do I quickly get to an offer number? If it's way off, how do I still make the call, make a connection, build a relationship? You know, like that was kind of the main thing we did today. Uh, throw creative in there. That's really important because you're going to have a lot of, you're going to open up an entire world if you can start having conversations around creative financing. Okay. Question. Can you elaborate on what makes a subject to deal really appealing to a cash buyer? Entry fee amount. Is there a percentage range you want to be at? Yeah. So uh, pull my screen back up here, Tyler. I'll show you real quick the answer to that. I believe is a couple things. They're going to primarily look at this net income. So this would be what's their cash flow after all of their operating and after factoring in the debt service. This is the take home. It's 254. You know, a lot of investors will eat deals alive making 254, especially if the entry fee is really low. When you look at the entry fee, I want this number to be lower 25%, maybe 30% or lower than the total acquisition. So if you look here, our total acquisition is 174. That's taking over the loan of 158. And that's adding in these, these fees you're going to pay cash to close. Right. So if I take if I take 170, let's just round it to 175, and I take 25% of that, that's 43,000. You're at 16,000 on the entry. Now, why? 25%. The reason why is because if this investor were to go buy this house with new financing, he would have to go get an investment loan. So he'd get a non-owner occupant investment loan. Those loans almost all require 25 to 30% down to be able to buy using like a conventional type of financing. Uh, so they want big down payments because their investment properties, they're high risk. So if an investor's thinking, you know, if I got to go qualify for financing, I'm going to have to come up with 25% down. So anything less than 25% down to pick up a deal with no qualifying, no bank qualifying, they're excited about that. That's very appealing. This one happens to be 16,000 divided by 175, less than 10%. So 16,000 is is 9% of the total acquisition to get into this deal. Someone's getting into this deal with 9% down to get into this deal at a at a 2.7 interest rate. You would be at a 9% interest rate if you were to get a new loan, investment loan on this property. So you guys see why this is appealing to a buyer, to a to a uh, investor? He would be paying 9% and 25% down to buy this house if he were to go out in the market right now today and get new financing. He's able to pick it up for 9% down at a 2.7 interest rate. That's what makes this a deal. 
You guys see that? Now he might also be looking at the depreciation write-off. He might be looking at the cap rate. Uh, he might be looking at his um, cash on cash return right here. He might be looking at that. Those are all awesome things, but that's it. He's looking at, okay, well, can I cash flow? Do I have a low entry fee? Am I getting into an awesome interest rate? I want this deal. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that, hopefully that, did that, did that answer that question? Let me know if that answered that. Does that makes sense. You guys. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of now getting into finance, right? Like, because now we're running, you know, math equations, but this is income producing. This is how we got to look at things. If, if you were to submit 10 offers a day, what would be the most efficient way to do it? Verbally, like you have been. Okay, so great question. Um, what I like to do is I like to do, if, if, let me back up. If you, can, if you can get it in writing, that's always better. A written offer is always the best. What I found with agents is they're lazy. And if I, if I rely on them to write the offer initially, a lot of them aren't going to want to do that, especially if I'm lowballing. They're just not going to want to spend the time to write the offer. So what I like to do, unless I'm close, if I know like their, the list price and my offer price is really close, then yeah, I'll push really hard for a written offer as soon as we can get it. But I like to do a two-step process. I like to say, hey, it's listed for 200. I'm at 100. You're agreeing to submit the offer. Call the seller, give them a verbal. If the seller responds favorably, then let's follow up with writing and get it in writing. But I can almost always get an agent to do a phone call to present a verbal offer to a seller to just see what the seller says. Mm -hmm. I would agree. That's what most of my offers are. Nine out of 10 offers are just, just verbal because they don't, I, don't, I don't even say it. I just say we would have to be here. We can write it up if you'd like. The completely up to you. I can provide proof of funds. And they usually say, no, I trust you. I'll just talk to them. And I was like, that's way better. I'm like, it's just because half the time I know sometimes it's kind of a waste of time because I feel like it's not going to, like the offer's not going to get accepted. But if they want to write it up, write it up. You don't say no because then you just look illegitimate. If they say, well, let's write it up and you'll say, no, it's not worth my time. Then they're like, it's not worth your time. If you and some, agents, some agents will say it. They'll say, look, let's write it up because I really want to show the seller that we're serious. Let's write it up. And if they want to write it up, I'm like, great. Because they're just going to send it to you in your email and you're going to docu-sign it. It takes you two seconds. Yeah. So if they're ever willing to, great. But don't expect them to and don't even I, – I wouldn't even ask them to yeah. most of the time, right? Just say, yeah, hey, call yeah. the seller, give them my number, and then let's talk, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna, you'll get so much further that way. So, guys, I look at a verbal as an offer. like I, That counts on your list of offers for the day. A verbal where an agent says, yes, I'll call the seller and make that offer, that counts as an offer. Yeah. Right. Great yeah. question. Good deal. A couple more minutes, guys. Uh, now's your chance. If you've got a question, let's hear it. Hey, guys, we have just a few minutes. So if you have any questions, this is kind of your last chance for Jerry or Brian uh, about anything we did today or anything else. Yeah, we could do one of these. So the question here is off market. We could do one of these. We'll have to really get super organized maybe so that we're not, you know, just calling a bunch of phone numbers and don't get through. But I don't know if people would still like to see that. That might get kind of super boring because you saw Jonathan. Jonathan called like five agents in a row. So here we are like trying to get on the phone with somebody. Um, and I, 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 I would like to make that time super effective where we're talking more than we're calling. Yeah. Um, Johnny, Josh, or Josh, Truman, any questions you guys have? What's your, uh, what's your big takeaways? What did you guys learn today? The reps is the most important. Good. Just got to get the reps in. Yeah. What do you mean? Why Why did that hit home? Well, I'm seeing what Brian's doing. And he's just calling agents like crazy. Even if the agents aren't, it's not a deal. And he's, like you said before, this is most likely not going to be a deal. It'll still call them and still establish that connection because they could give you possible deals in the future. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah, it's great. That's awesome. Truman, what about you? Any big takeaways? Uh, I definitely want to try to get into creative financing a little mm -hmm. more about it because, like you said, you can all sell for a premium. Yeah. And it's like, Yes, and we can learn it, you know. Oh, yeah, it's not that complicated. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I guess I've learned the gist of it, but I've never tried to implement it before. But I think I would totally try to. What's cool is, like, if you take this deal that Brian talked on the phone with, you know, taking over their loan at 158 
I mean, what would your cash number be? Half that? Like it's it's so not a deal for cash. But here, this you, you could possibly wholesale this. Yeah, yeah, you, you're you're way overpaying what you would for cash, and you're wholesaling it and making money. That's what's cool about creative. Yeah. It allows you to overpay for deals. Mm -hmm. And the seller can walk away with money in their pocket as opposed to doing a short sale, breaking even, whatever. So it's a it's a win-win-win all around if it works out. Yeah, everyone wins, right? The seller wins, you win, agent gets paid. Now, one thing, though, I, I want to point out, I forgot to mention this. Um, Brian did this brilliantly. You, you guys saw that that agent, when Brian talked about creative, the agent was like, immediately, number one concern is my commission. Yeah. Right. And Brian said, Oh yeah, we'll make sure your commission gets paid. Oh, well, if that's the case. Yeah. And, and in fact, she wanted the full 6%, you know, which is, which is yeah. like, okay, you got to, you got to, she wanted 6% and resale. And she even threw yeah. on me on the call. She said, Brian, this is a couple deals I've sent you. If this one doesn't work out, I'm going to stop sending them to you. I'm like, like what? So you'll come into agents like that. If it, if it works, it works. But I just completely ignored that. She said that. I just asked my next question. Yeah. Like, what do you got to do? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Okay. Care about commission. <laughs> yeah, but don't, don't ever. So this is one thing, Jonathan and Truman, if you're talking on market creative, always, always reiterate to the agent that you're going to get their commission. Yeah. If yeah. they don't, if you don't make sure that that's clear with them, there's no way they're going to work your your creative offer. Yep. Yeah. Johnny, Brian, Truman, Jerry, Jay, Tyler. Who's Jay? Jay's been super active in the chat, answering a bunch of questions. Oh, <laughs> great! Thanks, Jay. All flipping, all flipping henios. Yeah. Thank you all for such a great training. A lot of process, but valuable. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys got a lot of value out of this. If you guys do and you like these, we could we could definitely try to do more of them. Yeah, uh, it's been a long day. We went hard here for four hours. Good job, you guys. Thank you, Tyler, for manning the 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 whole thing. Like I, I wouldn't have been able to do that. You really did really good about all the screens and everything. So, Brian, you too. I know you're busy. You're doing a lot right now, and so for you to carve out four hours of your day, oh, appreciate it. Always That's worth it. Cool, guys. Make sure you tell Brian that he's he's got work to do and deals to do, and he's here he is four hours on on a live. So <laughs> yes, man. Hey, always looking to help. I love it. Love to come back. Love it. Gary, how's your Spanish? My Spanglish is my Spanglish is amazing. My Spanish is okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I think that'll do it. Jerry, if you just want to sign us off, we're right here at time. Yeah. Guys, so uh Maybe Tyler, we could follow up on the post when this, because when this ends, it'll then go as a video. Um, and we covered a lot of different things. We'll try to put some links on some of the resources we talked about. Although those will pop up if you rewatch this. So if you're watching this live right now, guys, um, you know, maybe go, maybe go in afterwards on the regular comment section yeah. and say something on there. Yeah. Yeah, I, we don't have one scheduled, but if you guys really, I don't want to do these unless it's uh, a lot of people like it and we're getting a lot of value and it's worth it. Uh, I love doing this. I could do this all day. It's really fun. I think I have, I had a blast. So I loved it. It's great. Yep. But otherwise guys keep watching the channel. We'll keep putting out a lot of good content for you and get to work. It's all about the reps and we'll see you guys on the next video. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jay. Really appreciate it. Thanks guys. Thanks Johnny and Truman. Yep.